afternoon here in Anaheim. Dan Schulman, Buck Martinez, Arden Swelling as the Blue Jays wrap up this season opening 10 game 11 day road trip. And Bo Bichette homering for the second game in a row last night. We'll start the season for Bichette at the plate. The Blue Jays 5 and 4 on the season. And it was the top four doing all of the damage in last night's game, including Matt Chapman, who had a double. And his first home run of the season, as you can see there, is on quite a hitting streak right now. Good news also, Danny Jansen feeling well enough to be back in there this afternoon behind the plate. Yeah, good to have Danny in there. He's handled Kikuchi very well all spring long. And you see the left-hander, Reed Edmers. Blue Jays have faced three left-handed starters in this series that took the first two games. Edmers has made just one start on Monday against the Seattle. It took no decision in a 7-3 win for the Angels. He is a left-hander that has a lot of promise. He's 23 years old. He threw a no-hitter last year against Tampa Bay. We're talking about Kevin Kimmel. He was in that game against that place when he threw that no-hitter last year. The Blue Jays trying to win the series. John Schneider's team excited to come home, see their own apartments or homes, see the new ballpark. Get a day off, although they won't get in until the middle of the night tomorrow morning, and then get ready for the Tigers in the home opener Tuesday night. But there is a task at hand first, and that's to try to win this series. Underway with George Springer fouling back the first pitch of the afternoon. Springer went two for five with his first home run of the season in last night's game. The top four in the order went 10 for 18 with three homers last night. The bottom five in the order did not have a hit or a run scored or an RBI. Springer just three for 14 so far this season against lefties, but this lineup to start the game has hit 327 against left-handed pitching so far this season. Detmers out in front, 0-2, and, and he misses with a high fastball for ball one. Thing that the Blue Jays may have been told about before the game. Detmer's velocity was noticeably higher in his first start of the season against Seattle than it was last year. Springer pops one back below us. It remains one and two. Yeah, a lot of that has to do with his age. He just turned 23 and he's just starting to get his real man strength. And he's got a great frame for pitching, real smooth delivery. High fastball foul to back, and this one just up above us is Springer keeps fouling back fastballs. Now, top of the zone, it's fastball, curveball, slider, and a change of four pitch mix. He had 27 strikeouts in spring training. He pitched a lot through 20 innings in the spring and punched out 27. And there's a nasty slider to get him one down. So now Bo Bichette, who is one of three co-leaders in hits in the American League, and the other two are also Blue Jays. And as you can see, the last trio of teammates with 16 or more hits in the first nine games of the season, you've got to go back over 100 years. Nap Lajoie, Sock Siebold, and Lave Cross back in 1901. That's I never could get Sock Siebold out. No. I just couldn't get him out. Well, he would choke up, yeah, take it the other way. Just ping it the other way. Yeah. Sharply hit, but right at the first baseman, Brandon Drury, and Bichette retired, two down. Well, both these clubs have some good athletes on the field defensively, and Taylor Lloyd's made some good plays in this series so far, sliding catch in the game last night. Trent Renfro round out the outfield. On the infield, Rendon back at third base, second straight start. Rochelle and he flew up the middle. Brandon Drury, their former Blue Jay, is at first base, and Logan O'Hoppy, the young catcher behind the plate for Reed Detmers. So two down here, top of the first. Here's Vladimir Guerrero Jr. went three for five with three singles in last night's game. You know the funny thing? I just looked up Sox Seabold on baseball reference, <laughs> and there are two of them. Now, Seabold is spelled differently, but obviously pronounced the same. So clearly the second Sox Seabold, you know, the first guy had his nickname, and the second guy took the same nickname. As Guerrero flies out to center, and Reed Denver's makes quick work of the Blue Jays. You say Kikuchi to the mound already.
Otani, Mike Trout, and the rest try to improve upon their 5 3 record to open up the season. Mike Trout, obviously, always one of the most dangerous hitters in baseball, and he has come out of the gate red hot this year on a seven game hitting streak right now. He has homered in each of the first two games of this series. And both he and Otani have a fair bit of experience against the former Seattle Mariner in Yusei Kikuchi. Kikuchi won his first major league game right here in this ballpark against the Angels, but he's really not fared well against them overall in his career. Taylor Ward will lead it off and take down and in ball one. Ward doesn't have as much experience against Kikuchi, but the experience he has has been positive for him. Four for five with a double and a homer. And Kikuchi has not fared well in his career against the Angels. He has not pitched well in this ballpark, but obviously he's just hoping to build upon what he did in Kansas City five days ago. Just low, two and one. Yeah, obviously a much tougher lineup he's facing here this afternoon with the Angels and that young team in Kansas City, but hopefully he can stay in the strike zone consistently. What did you see in his first start, Buck, that, uh, that you thought were the reasons he was more successful? Uh, a very compact delivery. He was working quickly, pitching with a lot of confidence. He only had two strikeouts, the last two batters of the fifth inning, but he had a stretch of eight straight retired in that game. Bounce to Guerrero, Kikuchi over to cover, and Vladdy leads him nicely, one down. Hey, look at it, man, Santa Blue Jays have been in five airs in this series. They're going to clean that up a little bit. Marshall's back in left here, Myra, over around in center, and when Merrifield goes from left to right, last night he was in left. Chapman, Bichette, Espinal, and Guerrero around the diamond. Good to see Danny Jansen back behind the plate. For you say Kikuchi, they have worked a lot together all spring long, and I'm sure Kikuchi feels comfortable throwing to Danny Jansen. The stomach bug that knocked Jansen out the last couple of days. So here's Trout now, six for 14, with a couple of home runs and four walks in his career against you say Kikuchi. And a first pitch fastball that misses outside for ball one. Trout in the early going this season is three for four with a home run against left-handed pitchers. They play him to pull on the infield, basically straight away in the outfield. Got that fastball in on his hands and is fouled back one and one. Yeah, he was a little bit late, and that just speaks to how good that Kikuchi fastball is. Danny Jansen took one off the mass right there, and Trout checking to make sure he's okay before he steps back in. Deflected by Kikuchi towards Bichette. The throw is not in time. And that'll be an infield hit for Mike Trout. Yeah, Kikuchi got a piece of it, slowed it down, and misdirected it back toward Bo, but it was going to be a tough play. Up the middle, you know, Espinal may have had that play had Kikuchi not deflected it. He was shaded near the bag at second, but Trout runs so well, Bo didn't have much of a chance to make a play on him. Well, he can still run. Yeah. You see him going down the line. You imagine he probably would have made a pretty good fullback or linebacker if he decided to choose football, but it worked out pretty well for him in baseball. Here's Shohei Otani. And Kikuchi and Otani, very familiar with one another, faced each other in Japan. Prior to that, actually went to the same high school in Japan. Although Kikuchi. Older, he graduated the year before Otani arrived, but then they faced each other a handful of times in Japan, and more so since Otani has come to the majors. That same high school coach, Hiroshi Sasaki, been a longtime coach there, and they have both played for him in high school. Ahead, 0 and 2. And this is very high for ball one. Otani actually inherited Kikuchi's number 17 uniform from high school. And he continues to wear that number today. Trout the lead being held on by Guerrero. And a ground ball to Guerrero. A good throw to get the lead runner and that's all. But another uh, instance where Vladimir Guerrero makes 
a fairly difficult player, or at least not a routine play, looked very easy. He is so confident throwing the ball to second base. Yeah, and that can be a real problem for a lot of first basemen, but Vladdy is so confident. Remember, he was a third baseman when he came through the minor leagues, and he's got a strong arm, very accurate arm. Fundamentally, he's very sound. He has great feet. He moves his feet around very effectively, and that helps him to be such a good thrower. So fielder's choice, runner at first, two down. Just a little soft toss from Otani, or from Kikuchi, rather, over to first. Otani being held on by Guerrero. And the batter is Anthony Rendon. His second game back from the suspension. Guy, they are looking to stay healthy and be productive, protecting Trout and Otani. And a guy who, in the past, has had great years with Washington top five MVP finishes and so on, signed a huge seven year deal, but has not been the same player or as healthy a guy in Southern California as he was with the Nationals. Kikuchi jumps out in front of one and two. Yeah, he's got a good fastball early in this inning, and he's been able to throw some quality pitches. He tied a trout with an inside fastball. He's done the same to Rendon here in this event. Good velocity and locating well. Did that very well against Kansas City. Popped up. Backing up Bichette. Giving way, and Valcho couldn't see it. Lost it in the sun. And a run will come in to score. Otani will score on the play. Rendon was not running hard, so he's only at first. But you can see for the moment it left the bat, both Bichette and Varsho were fighting it. And Varsho couldn't find it. Yeah, and Bo can't see it there. Varsho's trying to play it off to the side, and he stays with it, but never really saw the ball. We talked about this at the open of the show, how... It's hazy and a bright sunny day, and that's unfortunate. That's going to cost Kikuchi a run. But you're right. You can see the sky. It's so bright. There's no clouds in the sky, but there's a haze, and some of it's left over from the fireworks they started this game with. But the sun straight up high over this stadium. And now a rocket to left by Hunter Renfro. Boy, what a shame for Kikuchi, who was making good pitches, should have been out of the inning. Ball lost in the sun, and now all of a sudden it's a three run inning. Yeah, and watch the location of that pitch just 89 miles an hour he knows on contact it's not going to stay in the ballpark but you're right you know psychologically you make a pitch you get Rendon to pop up you think you're out of the inning the ball drops cost you run now you got to battle a tough hitter the next bat all the runs are earned the scoring on the Rendon play is an RBI single and then the two run homer by Renfro and now here's former Blue Jay Brandon Drury getting a start at first base again today You really think about it, the trout infield hit went off Kikuchi's glove. That could have been a ground out to the second baseman and the pop up that drops. It's unfortunate, but that's the way baseball is. Outside at the knees, two and one. Chase up high, two and two. The the stuff is live as it was against Kansas City, and the control has been good. He would want the one back to Renfro, obviously. That was kind of middle middle, and he paid the price for it. Was a, a changeup that he really left up badly in the zone. It was just 89 miles an hour. Oh, 
Two and two, the count on Drury. And now you're having to throw all these extra pitches as well. Yeah, and you know that's what he did so well in his first outing. He threw under 14 pitches per inning in that five inning stint. Last year he was up over 18 pitches an inning. It's like a boxer going a four minute round instead of a three minute round. And he got him. First strike out of the afternoon. But a tough first inning for Kikuchi. Three to nothing Angels. Hi, where Dalton Varsho just walked past me. He's about to make his first plate appearance of today's game. There's a lot of things we could show you from what Varsho's done over his first week with the Blue Jays. But how about a walk from last night against Tyler Anderson in the fifth inning? This is actually the plate appearance that drove Anderson from the game. And watch Varsho make an adjustment here as he swings and misses at a cutter off the plate, then takes a very similar pitch, also takes a two-seamer in a similar spot, and draws his walk. I talked to Varsho this morning about that adjustment. He said, I knew I had to do something against Anderson's cutter because I wasn't seeing it well. He'd gotten me out with it twice, so I tried to tell myself that if I see it up, I'm swinging. If I see it down, I'm not. This is speaking to the adjustment and the evolution that Dalton Varsh was still making as a hitter, guys. He now has two walks this year against left-handed pitching. He only had three in all of 2022. Arden, thank you. And they're going to give him every opportunity to play against lefties. As Matt Chapman leads off the top of the second. And fouls one back. Varsho hanging in there. Again, small sample size, but hanging in there well against lefties in the early going. Matt Chapman hanging in there well against everybody right now. Hitting 457. Leads the majors in doubles with seven. In his first home run last night. Chapman Varsho and Whit Merrifield here in the top of the second and the Blue Jays have some work to do early. Boy another hard hit ball. I mean he is just lacing everything that he swings at. Yeah he's in a real good spot and you mentioned the top three with Vladdy Bo and Chappie. Now they are 14 for 28 in this series. With three home runs and seven RBIs, those three hitters are wearing out the Angels pitching staff. And Matt Chapman has the highest average exit velocity in all of baseball right now. He's aboard to lead off the second, and here's Varsha. And he'll look at strike one. You know, this is neither here nor there. It's just a, it's not just a scoring thing, but it's a scoring thing. Like I get why Varsho's not charged an error. He shouldn't be. He lost the ball in the sun. But there should be some sort of, if you want to call it a team error or something, like Kikuchi just got three earned runs put on his record. And I don't know if that's something, you know, that has ever been discussed, but to have some sort of a team error or a, you know, you, you got baseball there. Mm. It, Rendon didn't hit the ball worthy of getting a hit, and Kikuchi shouldn't be. You know, penalized to the extent that he was, but again, it's just a scoring thing. Yeah, so. and that's just baseball. Yeah. You play day games, and the sun is going to be involved, and once in a while, you'll lose balls in the sun. It's been going on forever. And a swing and a miss. Varsho down on strikes for the first out. 
That's that nasty slider. They struck out Springer right in there with that slider in the first inning. Now he gets Varsho put it in a good spot. Uh, Dalton, he came into this game three for ten against lefty pitching, doing a pretty good job, as you mentioned. So here's Whit Merrifield getting his third consecutive start in the series, and all of them have come as an outfielder. Two in left, and now today in right. With Santiago Espinal starting all three games at second base. So the versatility of Merrifield coming into play in the early going. Big hole on the right side of the infield. It's 0 and 2 on Merrifield. And again, very good velocity for Detmers up to 96 there. Yeah, and you know, you can have all the scouting reports you want until you get into the box and you see that velocity. You say, okay, he's got a little better fastball than I expected there. Right? So you just got to get it ready a little bit sooner. Throw down to first. Chapman back standing up. We have seen O'Happy, the young catcher. He likes to throw, you know, likes to throw behind the runners. We've seen him do that a few times. This is the second time he's caught in the series. Merrifield's doing a little uh, kind of internal talking to himself here in this at bat. Yeah, but in game adjustments, in at bat adjustments, when you see a pitcher and you haven't seen him for a while, you say, okay, he's got a little better fastball than I remember. I gotta get my bat ready a little sooner. Well, that's a tough take right there in a two strike count. That's the that's the slider at 91. That's the pitch he struck George Springer out on. Mile an hour sliders, no joke. And as Buck said, just 23. High fly ball to left field, and Ward started in. He finds it and makes the catch off to his left for the second out. And one of the things that happened in between innings was Taylor Ward in a conversation with the coach about the sky. Yeah, talking about. Using your body to get a good angle on that fly ball, and he did it right there on the Merrifield fly ball to the left field. Don Varsha was trying to do the same thing to play it off to the side, trying to get it out of that sun, but sometimes you just can't do it. Once it gets in that sun, you just can't locate it again. So two down for Santiago Espinal. Watch how Taylor Ward plays this off to the side. You can see the sun. Reflecting off his sunglasses, but he wasn't looking directly up into it. He played his body off to the side and had an angle on that fly ball. Third start in a row for Espinal at second base. He's hitting seventh this afternoon. And he's in the hole 0 2. Yeah, he's got all three pitches working early in this ball game. We've seen a terrific fastball, a wicked slider, both to lefties and righties, and a very good changeup. He throws a lot of two strike sliders to right handed hitters. That slider has been up to 91 miles an hour. the sign he was looking for from his catcher Logan Ohapi. Again the lead by Chapman bounces in and away from Ohapi and the wild pitch will allow Chapman to go to second. Boy well, he really tried to snap off a wicked breaking ball and bounced it well in front of home plate. See how far out in front it almost hit the grass. He was that short of the mark. Now a base hit could bring in the first run of the ball game for the Blue Jays if Espinal can get one to the outfield, can line one somewhere, a ball and two strikes to count on him. And did 
well to get a piece of that slider. Yeah, that one was a perfect slider down and in, and SP did a nice job of getting a piece of it to stay alive. We mentioned that Detmers threw a no-hitter last year. It was May 10th against Tampa Bay. 12th no-hitter in franchise history for the Angels. Only two batters reached base against them. One walk and one error. Just the second rookie to throw a no-hitter in Angels history. The other was Bo Belinsky way back in 1962. As you mentioned, Kevin Kiermeyer was a part of that raise team. Two and two. Now the count on Espinal. Popped up right side. And Renfro comes in. He's got an easier play than the left fielders have had. The Blue Jays will be Chapman aboard. Download the Bet365 app and check out the latest odds for today's baseball games. Bottom of the second here in Anaheim. Dan Schulman, Buck Martinez, Arden Zwelling, the Angels 3 and the Blue Jays nothing as the Jays wrap up this 10-game road trip. Number 7 hitter Luis Renjifo leading it off against Yusei Kikuchi. The switch hitting second baseman hit a home run last night. Hitting 167 on the season. He homered from the other side of the plate last night. The Blue Jays had an early 4 0 lead, but the Angels just kept coming and eventually won 9 5. They hit three home runs. So far, Kikuchi hasn't been able to master his changeup because of that split grip, and that's the ball that Renfro hit out of the ballpark. His fastball's been good, his slider's been good, but he hasn't really hit on his changeup yet. Which can be a, a very effective pitch for him. They call it a changeup. As Buck said, it's a splitter. He throws it with a, a split grip, but they refer to it as a changeup. Maybe just more of a mental thing about how they want to execute it or the kinds of counts that they are throwing it in. They know a lot of guys will throw their changeup with that split grip. Tom Hankey threw it like that, and that's how he used his changeup. And it wasn't a real full blown splitter like a Gosman splitter, but it's an effective pitch. This one popped a mile up in the air to the right side. Guerrero over for a look, but it's back in the seats. And the Blue Jays have Gosman who throws a splitter, Eric Swanson throws a splitter, Anthony Bass throws a splitter. <laughs> He'll take any opportunity he has to hug out. Just a good teammate. Yeah. That's all he is. Just a good teammate. Yep. But now I had a good side session here today. He'll pitch the opener on Tuesday night. Looking forward to that. And then he got him. Ren Hifo swings through it. One down. <laughs> 
that the Peters, who at the last out struck out Brandon Dury with a slider, comes back with a slider here, and it's a good one. It gets from Evil to swing over the top of it. You know, we mentioned Yusei Kikuchi signed as a free agent four days after the lockdown ended last March. And I don't think he ever really got comfortable with this new team. And it's just hard. You come into a new team, you're a free agent, you have high expectations, you want to do well. And he actually lost his starting spot in the rotation late in August. And he pitched the rest of the season out of the bullpen. Up the middle, a base hit for Urshela. And you talked about it off the top of the show. Uh, Kikuchi has become one of the most popular players on the team. And, and if you talk to a lot of different people about him, the fact that he's had a full spring training, his English is, is really, really good. He has worked very hard on it. He now does interviews in English uh, at times. And his personality is starting to come out. He's feeling more a part of the team. You and I were talking to Brandon Belt. He was talking about how hilarious Kikuchi is. George Springer said, I want to hang out with that guy more. He's the funniest guy on the team, and player after player after player is saying that about Kikuchi. They, last year when things weren't going well, they tried to make him feel as much a part of the group as they could. Now that he feels more confident and more a part of things, you know, he's able to make more of an effort and to feel better about his place on the team. Yeah, and just think about it. And, you know, I had the opportunity to play Winterboro in Spanish-speaking countries in Puerto Rico and Venezuela, and it's different. Your mm -hmm. culture is totally different, and you can imagine how dramatically different it is for Japanese players to come here. And, you know, it's not just the language, it's the entire culture. And he is one of the classiest people I've ever been around in baseball. When you speak to him and he's walking off the field, he will literally stop, take his glasses off, take his hat off, and bow to you before you start the conversation. Ahead of Logan O'Hoppy, a ball and two strikes. Yeah, always a smile on his face. And on this road trip, and again, this team has been together for a long time. They haven't been back to Toronto, and, and they were together all through spring training, and now a 10-game road trip on the plane in the hotels, on the bus. They've really gotten to know each other well, and Kikuchi's right in the middle of it. Now, he was a terrific pitcher in Japan, and he was the number one pick in the Japanese draft first overall. And he signed with the Cebu Lions, pitched six years with the Cebu Lions. Had some terrific seasons in Japan. Ground ball right at Bichette to Espinal for one and on to first in time to turn the double play and end the inning. A much better second. The Sun not a part of it in the bottom of the second as the Blue Jays turn the 6-4-3 inning ending double play. Part Social for a one-of-a-kind experience at the ballpark. Located in the 500 level, Park Social is a park within the park. All fans come to the ballpark and visit the new outfield district spaces. 
Bringing the whole family great ticket options available at bluejays.com slash outfield. Did you call that beanbags or cornhole? Cornhole. Yeah. Well, yeah, they have the National <laughs> Cornhole Championship yeah. on ESPN, of course. Yeah. But, yeah. No, it's, uh, it's a southern kind of thing. And, yeah, that's what we call it. There's Danny Jansen back in the lineup after missing the last couple of games. 3 0 Angels going top three. Slider in for a strike from Reed Detmers. Boy, he's got good stuff. He yeah, really does. He's had it from the first pitch of this game, and he's pitching with a lot of confidence right now. His fastball's got a lot of life. It's riding up in the zone, and then that slider's breaking down and into the right handed hitters. Edmers hasn't given up a home run since August 13th coming into this game, a stretch of 43 and two-thirds innings. So he keeps the ball in the ballpark. And he is running that hard slider in on the hands of the right-handed batters. Yeah, that's as hard as anybody's slider in baseball. I mean, you just start talking about Jacob DeGrom kind of slider and Max Scherzer kind of slider, but Edmers has got a good one this afternoon. It's almost like an uh, like Al Leiter's cutter used to be, right? I mean, it's just, I mean, it's breaking down, but it was just running right in on the hands of these right-handed batters, tying them up, awkward swings. Got more of the plate than he wanted to with that one, and Jansen fouls it back out of play. But when you're throwing it so hard, you can get away with those mistakes, and I, I think that's the thing about it. You know, you, you'd like to be able to locate it all the time, but when you throw it. 89 and 91, you can get away with some mistakes occasionally. Two two again and down and in, moving the feet of Jansen. It's a full count. Danny in the eighth spot today. Kevin Kiermeyer on deck, and then George Springer after him here in the top of the third. Fastball by him, one down. Step up to the plate and take on any DIY project. At Home Hardware Building Centers, we have everything to build anything. Here's how. Well, I don't know if it was a DIY project, but pretty pretty big project over the winter at Rogers Center. And it has all come to completion. Maybe, maybe a little paint's dry in here and there, but it'll be ready to go Tuesday night for the home opener. And if you aren't there in person, we hope you can join us here on Sportsnet. The Tigers provide the opposition. Alec Manoa will be on the mound, and it will be an exciting night. Kevin Kiermeyer lifts one to shallow left. Two down. First time through the order, Dittmers has given up one to single. Uh, that chapter hit that ball hard in left field, but he has three strikeouts. Uh, Blue Jays have been able to see all of his pitches second time to see if they can adjust to him. So here's George Springer who struck out his first time up. And that's the slower curveball. It's 74 miles an hour. So you're thinking 95 96 on the fastball, 90 91 on the slider, and here comes 74, a big breaker. Yeah, you don't have to throw a lot of them. But just letting hitters know, hey, I got this one just in case, and he stole the strike with that first pitch curveball to Springer. George lays off up and away, two and one. Just one hit for the Blue Jays so far. The Chapman single in the second. Detmer Sharp. The Angels with three in the first, two on the home run by Hunter Renfro. And there, two and two. Another 
big crowd today. Not quite as big as the last couple of nights. They were over 44,000 each of the first two games of this series. Another strikeout. That is the fourth already for Detmers, who is looking extremely sharp. Here. Things kind of spiraled out of control in game two. Now you've had a few months. You've been asked this a lot of times, but really deep down, did you make a mistake? Are there things that you regret doing? And you can see that interview, Hazel May and John Schneider talking about, among other things, that game two against Seattle. See that as part of Blue Jays Central on opening night between 6 and 7 o'clock Eastern Time here on Sportsnet. Also, part three of the Alec Manoa series will air on Tuesday on Blue Jays Central. This chapter focusing on Manoa's relationship with his older brother Eric and how their competitiveness played a major role in Alec Manoa's personality. So, a lot to look forward to and to watch on the pregame show, getting you ready for the game itself Tuesday night. Here, three nothing Angels. Bottom of the third, top of the order. Taylor Ward against Yusei Kikuchi, and it's popped up. Chapman coming in. He's fighting the sun, but he makes the play. One down. You know, in the first inning, that ball that Rendon hit was a tough play for Barsha, who had dropped for a base hit. The sun there was an issue there, and Chapman using his bare hand to shield himself. And you know, you see this all the time. Players wear sunglasses, but they always put them on the bill of their hat. <laughs> we used to play with the flip down sunglasses, right. so when a ball went up in the air, you flipped it down, you looked up into the sun, you could see it, but they don't do that anymore. Well, flip sunglasses, those were like 70s cool. Oh, everybody flip had sunglasses. Had. Yeah. And there were different degrees of shade. Like you'd have some gray ones, you'd have some very dark green ones for real, real bright days, but some players choose to wear them like bow, and others put them on the top of their cap just to be kind of cool. The ball and a strike on Mike Trout. Had an infield hit his first time up. Hit it back towards the mound and it Kikuchi deflected it towards Bichette at short. But by the time Bo could get the ball over to first and, and he made a good play but Trout just runs so well he beat it out. Well that's a tough pitch yeah. to take. Kikuchi wanted the call. You don't normally see that on a, on a call that doesn't go his way. And after the fact, he asked the umpire if it was low, but watch his reaction. That's a pretty good pitch, and he wants the call. I like it. There's a strike, two and two. You say he came to camp motivated and focused to win a job in the rotation. He pitched 20 innings in spring training and struck out 31. You know, the other pitchers were kind of getting ready for their start. It was assumed that everybody was going to be in the rotation, the other four starters, but we didn't really know about Kikuchi. So he had to pitch well, and he won the job. I mean, he pitched better than anybody in camp. It allowed only two earned runs as Trout uses his timeout. Three, two. And ripped up the middle of base hit. Trout two for two. Well, 
Mike's in a real good spot right now. He now has 11 hits and 28 at bats to start the season. Another sharp single up the middle. The first one was an infield hit, as Dan mentioned, but I'll go back to WBC. He cranked up things to get ready for that tournament to play Team USA, and it's gotten him off to a good start. So he's at first with a one out for Shohei Otani, who reached on a fielder's choice his first time up. Checks it and he takes it in for ball one. Well, it's hard to tell who's more popular between Trout and Otani, and, and you can understand why it's a pretty good race, as talented as both of them are. I thought it was interesting during the introductions opening day, Otani's interpreter got a big round yes, of applause. <laughs> You're exactly right. <laughs> I, I yeah. was kind of, who's this guy? Yeah. And he got there and he's got a sweatshirt on. It's yeah. his interpreter. Yeah. Bigger than any of the coaches, probably, any of the other support staff for the Angels. There he is. Yeah. He's a rock star yeah. here. Every Otani at bat feels like an event. Maybe even more than Trout. Left center field. Kiermaier giving chase. It's gone. stride he just uses his hands tremendous lift on that ball hits it out to deep left center his third home run of the season and it is now five to nothing for the angels like a slider from Kuchi that Otani got all of Here's Rendon. Heads up, Buck. That's in the booth next to us, but rattling around like a pinball in there. Yeah, they come back here quickly, yep. that's for sure. They could raise that net up about another 10 feet. <laughs> you know, again, I'm going to go back to the first inning, and you say he had to throw nine extra pitches after that pop up dropped for a base hit. And he threw 25 pitches in the first inning, but nine after what looked like the third out of the inning. Rendon, he was the guy who hit the pop up, credited with an RBI single, and then Renfro homered after him. Otani is homered this inning. This is Otani's. Sixth year in the major leagues, and in the first five, the Angels they haven't made the playoffs. And it's amazing when you have arguably, or maybe inarguably, the two best players in the world that this team has not made the playoffs in any of the five years where both of them have been on the team. The last time the Angels made the playoffs was 2014. Just Trout was here. They got swept in the first round. Mike Trout's never won a playoff game. Shohei Otani's never played in a playoff game. No swing on the appeal, and Rendon on his way down to first. It's the first walk of the afternoon. That's going to bring Pete Walk out of the uh, dugout. He's going to go to the mound, take a look at the side swing. Uh, he never got close to swinging at that pitch. He did a good job of checking his swing. So he's been on base twice. And Pete Walker is at the mound. As you said, that is Hideki Sato, who is out there acting as the interpreter currently on the Blue Jays staff. Now he's got to face Renfro, who homered off him last time up. Oh, 
Renfro acquired in a trade with Milwaukee in the offseason. And a guy who brings some pop. 31 homers two years ago with the Red Sox. 29 homers last year with the Brewers. Yeah, he has two now, and he's homered in the last two games here. I mentioned it earlier in the series how he moves around a lot, but he's kind of a desired commodity. Gives you good defensive play in the outfield. He's got a very strong arm, and he's got power. Cutting a foul back, one and two. Up to 60 pitches now through two and a third. Again, a lot of the Angels familiar with Kikuchi from his time in Seattle. They saw him a lot. There's a base hit through the right side for Renfro. Rendon stops at second. The MLB Ballpark app will complete your next visit to the ballpark. Buy and manage game tickets, redeem offers, access exclusive content, and much more. Download it today. Well, you mentioned how the Angels are very familiar with Kikuchi, and you say he's had his troubles in this ballpark. He has now pitched seven times here, he made seven starts. He's given up ten home runs in those seven starts, including two this afternoon. Now here's Brandon Drury, who struck out his first time up. First and second, and just one out. John Schneider, the Blue Jays, they had to use four relievers last night. Now they do have the off day tomorrow, so you've got some arms. But it's kind of that daily balance between, you know, do I extend them a little bit and save some arms, or do you bring somebody else in and attempt, you know, still to do everything you can to win this game? Right now, nobody is thrown. And I'm sure John Schneider would tell you that Kikuchi is pitched better than the numbers would suggest. Part of that was the ball lost in the sun. Uh, and you know, it sounds like we might be making excuses for Kikuchi, but the fact of the matter is, psychologically, a pitcher makes a pitch, you expect it to be an out, and then you've got to make several more pitches to get out of the inning. You can change the whole ball game, right, in the first inning. And that's just the way the ball bounces for baseball sometimes you get out of it sometimes they hit line drives at people and you're accredited with outs it remains one and two on Drury Rendon and Renfro aboard. Sixty six pitches, forty strikes so far for Kikuchi. The one two again. And he got him. Strikes him out for the second time, and that's the second out here in the third. Another good slider from Kikuchi. Second time he's got Brandon Drew to chase that slider. Looks like a strike right at the bottom of the zone and it breaks down and in. This one's over the top of him. So now Luis Renjifo, who struck out in his first at bat. Kikuchi now with three strikeouts in the game. a little bit high 2 and 0 oh. and 
Sent foul down the right field line, two and one. He's already thrown more pitches now in this game than he threw in the five inning outing against the Royals. Yeah, and he's had a lot of foul balls in this game. I think there's over 11 foul balls he's given up so far. That increases your pitch count, obviously, and there's another. He's thrown fastballs a lot. He's thrown 38 fastballs. He's had 20 swings, only three swings and misses on the fastball. So they either put it in play or fouling it off, and it elevates your pitch count. 2 2. Low, full count. So the runners will be on the move. Rendon from second and Renfro from first. And as the crowd gets louder here at Angel Stadium. And he got him. Chased the slider down and in. Back to back strikeouts to strand a couple of runners. But the Angels extend their lead. As Shohei Otani puts one out to left center. Buck and Dan have been doing a great job of telling you just how effectively he's using that upper 80s sliders here today. And this is something that we're seeing across baseball. Look at fastball usage year over year. This season, we're seeing the lowest percentage of fastballs thrown across the game since StatCast began tracking in 2008. And that is because there are plenty of pitchers throughout the game like Detmers throwing upper 80s sliders. And hitters will tell you, Dan, this is really a factor when those late inning leverage relievers come in. It's kind of counterintuitive, though. They're throwing fastballs harder than ever, but less often than ever. But guys love spinning the baseball now when they're so good at it. And, I mean, who knows for sure. But hitting today just seems so much different than it did in other eras. I don't know how you feel about that buck but it just seems everybody's got more velocity and everybody's got a great secondary pitch as well as Bichette lines out one down. Yeah and I think it goes back and forth you know hitters can be dominant for a while and then the pitchers will make adjustments and you've got to counteract those adjustments and now there are pitching machines that can recreate the spin and the velocity of all these pitchers so the hitters have become very good at handling velocity so to counteract that the pitchers will throw more breaking balls more off speed pitches. Here's Vladimir Guerrero Jr. hit a fly ball to center field his first time up. Oh. Reed Detmers has faced 11 batters. He's retired 10 of them. And the 1-1. 
Guerrero takes outside. Close miss there, two and one. We always talk about second generation players in reference to the Blue Jays, but Edmund's father, Chris, played in the minor leagues with the Cardinals. And he signed with the Cardinals and pitched 136 games in the minors. He pitched a lot. He was bigger than Reed. He was 6'5. But in looking at his stats, I made the assumption he wasn't overpowering because he didn't have a lot of strikeouts. But in 96, he had a heck of a year at double A in Memphis with the Cardinals. Another one popped up into shallow center, and it will be the second baseman, Len Hefo, who makes the play. Trout was playing deep, and Len Hefo said, I got it. Now all of the defenders understand how challenging this sun can be on this bright afternoon here in Anaheim so everybody converges on the pop up somebody might be able to see it better than the next guy so when went out there a long way to make the catch. So two down for Matt Chapman who's got the only Blue Jay hit today a line drive single to left back in the second. And with that that we're starting him off with the slow curveball one of the few he's thrown today. Got to do something different to cool off Chapman. Just a little in, two and zero. Oh. Like a change up there that he threw on two and zero, oh, but he didn't get the call on his ball three. Well, Matt Chapman practices 2-0-3-0 counts during BP. He's not going to swing here with his club down 5 nothing. But he practices these counts, and what he wants to do is just make sure he gets something that he can hit hard. Don't swing at it just because it's a count in your favor. You've got to have an idea what pitch you want to swing at. Some people think because there's a fair bit of swing and miss in his game that he is an aggressive hitter and he chases. That is not the case. He sees a lot of pitches. He takes a lot of pitches. And he's not swinging and missing much so far this year. Especially with two strikes. And there's the walk. A two out base runner for Dalton Varsha. Well, he saw that very quickly out of the hand. It was going to be a ball. You could see his body relax immediately as Edmers turned that ball loose. That's how well he's tracking the baseball right now. There you see it right away. He knew it wasn't going to be a strike and he took it quickly out of the hand. And that's a great sign when the hitter picks up the baseball that quickly. So here's Varsho who struck out his first time up. Another second generation guy. We talked about his dad, Gary, who spent eight years in the majors as an outfielder. And even the guy on deck, Whit Merrifield, his dad played in the minors, didn't got this close to the majors. Whit's dad got called up for a day and the game got rained out and he was in the lineup and he never got another chance. You can't get any closer than Whit Merrifield's dad guy. Tapper back to the mound, and that's all for the Blue Jays in the top of the fourth. No runs, no hits, a man left. Five nothing, Angels.
guys over the last two days about what are you looking forward to when it comes to the home opener on Tuesday? Kevin Kiermeyer and Dalton Varshall. Let's start with Kiermeyer, who of course spent years and years with the Rays. And being a Ray is a different experience than being a Blue Jay is and will be for Kevin Kiermeyer. They don't even sell out on opening day. And I said, what are you looking forward to? Like, do you realize how many fans this team has and, and that sort of thing? As we go to the bottom of the fourth, 5 nothing Angels. And he said, let me tell you the first time I realized it. I was, uh, his wife, and, and he got invited to a wedding in Mexico in the offseason. They're down in Mexico, and there are other people there. And all of a sudden, the next table over sends some drinks over. And Kevin looks up, and there are a bunch of people at the table, and they're all looking around. And people come over, and they say, we're from Toronto. Welcome to the Blue Jays. Yeah. And Kevin went, wow. Yeah. At a wedding in Mexico. Huh? And, and and he said that's the first time he really re and he knows obviously he's played in Toronto but that that's when it kind of really hit him how different things can be and he said he just can't wait to run out to center field for that that first time in Toronto Tuesday yeah it's a special place to play and you don't really recognize how special it is until you play there I mean Mark Burley remember when he got traded from Miami he went kicking and screaming and within a few months he was trying to sell Toronto. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He wanted everybody else to come to Toronto to find out what a great place it was to play. Three and one the count on Gio Urshela who had a base hit his first time up. So then I asked Dalton Varsha. He of course came from Arizona and another team that tends to have its biggest crowds when like the Dodgers come to town. I mean they've got you know they've got fans but they don't have the, the number of fans that a team like the Blue Jays had. Swing and a miss and a strikeout of her shell of five now for Kikuchi. And I said to Dalton, have you ever been to Toronto? And he said, I've never been to Toronto. I said, have you ever been to Canada? And he said, yes, I have been to Canada. Uh, he played in something called the Northwoods League, which is like a wood bat summer league for college players. And uh, there was a team in Thunder Bay. So he's been, the first place in Canada he went to was Thunder Bay, Ontario a few years back. Played two summers in that league and then coming up through the system with the Diamondbacks he played in the Northwest League and of course that's where the Vancouver Canadians play so he has been to Vancouver he has been to Thunder Bay but he has never been to Toronto and he is uh, although he he's more low key about it and he is excited as well oh, drive another one hit hard to left a home run for Ohapi the rookie catcher with his third of the season and the Angels extend the lead Logan O'Hoppy now has nine RBIs and he leads the Angels in runs batted in. Three homers and nine ribbies for O'Hoppy. And they might have something in this young catcher. Sign with the Phillies and he's up here. He's a good looking catcher. And he gets a pop. Three home runs for the Angels here this afternoon against Kikuchi. 6 nothing now and a back around to the top of the order for Taylor Ward. Sends one to right, but Merrifield has lots of room to make the catch. Two down. That's not a bad pitch, but it looked like he was looking for that slider, and it's down and in. He goes down and golfs it into the bullpen in left center, bounces into the seats. And has three home runs now and nine RBI. And here's Mike Trout, two for two with a couple of base hits and a run score. And that's a slower breaking ball. That's the curveball there from Kikuchi that we haven't seen a whole lot of so far in his two starts. And he gets the call on, the, on a high strike. It's 0 and 1. Fifth pitch of the afternoon. And swung on and missed. One and two. No activity in the Blue Jay bullpen. Two down here in the fourth inning. And 
in and out of the mid off the chest protector maybe of Danny Jansen still two and two and a couple of times in trout at bats Danny's taking a foul ball and not sure where this hits him but that's right off the mask yeah. once again he had one of those in the first inning when trout was hitting Another one fouled right back and into the booth to our right again and caught on the fly. What a grab. Well, they've had a lot of practice. Yeah. They've had three or four of them go in there. <laughs> he deserved to celebrate. Yeah, that hand hurts a little bit, doesn't it? And now a foul tip as Trout strikes out and the inning comes to a close, but the Ohapi home run makes it six to nothing. Getting your amazing April 50-50 tickets. The jackpot's over a quarter of a million dollars already. And it could go over a million by the time the month is done. Whether you're at home or will be at the park, get in on the action now at BlueJays.com slash 5050 if you are anywhere in Ontario. And we have some Blue Jay fans here in Anaheim, which means we have some Buck Martinez fans here in Anaheim, of course. Although that should say Prime Minister. Well, well it says both. I get PM uh, and Prez. I didn't see the PM. It, PM and Prez. It uh, like took me all night to put that together. <laughs> <laughs> your art, your art skills are much better I than have, I remember yeah, them being. Yeah, yeah. A lot of glue on my fingers. Yeah. Uh, there were uh, several groups of people with signs sitting down towards the first base side of the field, the Blue Jays side, with uh, with signs showing their love for Buck before the game, and a lot of people. Uh, we've met some people from uh, Manitoba, met some people from Alberta, met a nice gentleman from Red Deer. But a lot of folks who are Edmonton Oilers fans came down a few days ago, saw the Oilers play the Ducks, and then parlayed that into the Blue Jays and the Angels over the weekend. Yeah, and obviously a lot of people from Western Canada, from the prairies and B.C. have come down here. California, Disneyland's right around the corner from our hotel. But, you know, you mentioned uh, Kiermaier in Mexico, and you've got Blue Jay fans. And Blue Jay and Canadian fans travel all over the place, but they're always looking around, and they always see. They recognize their – and Kiermaier, a new Blue Jay, but he played against the Blue Jays so much that they recognized him and acknowledged his yep. presence. Up and into Espinal, the ball and two strikes. The other question I always ask the new Blue Jays is, have you heard about the Seattle thing? And they've all been told by their teammates. They know that it's almost entirely Blue Jay fans. They open the gates early. Everybody floods down the, the stairs for BP. And Chopper towards third. Throw to second. They'll get one, and that's all. As Espinal will reach on the fielder's choice. 
Well, you know, you mentioned that, and that's quite a scene when they open the gates in Seattle. I imagine the same is going to be true at Rogers Center with all those uh, general admission areas, open oh, yeah. areas, and yeah. people got to get up there and get prime seating when you get up there and you want to get the railing of those open-air places. I'm sure people are going to line up early to gain access to those new areas at Rogers Center. I'm not sure visiting relievers will be quite as excited uh, because the fans are going to be right on top of them. Here's Danny Jansen 0 for 1. Looking down to Luis Rivera, the runner at first, Espinal. 6 0 Angels out hitting the Blue Jays 8 to 2. Nobody throwing in the Blue Jays' pen, so Yusei Kikuchi will be coming back out for the bottom of the fifth, and Shohei Otani is going to lead it off. Throw down to first, and back in safely is Espinal. Now, we've seen that a couple times today where Wahapi, the catcher, will throw behind the runner at first base. He likes to throw, he's very active back there. The Angels are to take a big step forward. One of the areas there they think they have to do it in is in the starting pitching. They have been kind of devastated by starting pitching injuries in recent years, and this guy is a, a big part of the puzzle right now. Bill Nevin, the manager of the Angels, tough division. Swing and a miss by Jansen. Two down. Well, the Angels are up to put a good start in that category this season coming into this game. 338. Earned run average by their starters, sixth in the majors. Danny Jansen a little bit late on that high fastball. Another strikeout for Detmers. Gets Jansen for a second time. That's five already. And here's Kiermeyer hit a fly ball to left field his first time up. Jimmy really done a good job early on against left-handed pitching. With the line out his first time up, he is four for nine so far against lefties. And it's a two-hopper out to second. And the Blue Jays are retired, leaving a man on. Go to the bottom of the fifth, six-nothing Angels, but first back to the studio for an update with Jamie Kemp. Bottom of the fifth for the Angels hit a two run homer his last time up. His third home run of the season, his third home run off Yusei Kikuchi in the big leagues. That does not take into account. Have it over in Japan. Boy, oh boy, oh, what a start both Trout and Otani are off to for the Angels this year. And again, this could be Otani's final year as an Angel. Unless he signs an extension, he will be a free agent at the end of this season. 
when he was asked about that buck, and this goes back two, three months now, I mean, he didn't say yes, he didn't say no. He said, I'm focused on this, and I want to win this year. And, you know, he's keeping keeping it close to the vest, as he is more than entitled to do. But boy, can you imagine, if he does get to free agency, what those meetings and phone calls will be like. <laughs> yeah, and you just think about it. Who's going to be the players in that free agent bidding? You've got to think the Dodgers are going to be front and center. Kuchi puts that fastball up in the end, and Otani had to get out of the way, and now he's going to ask for time. But yeah, yeah it's uh, just imagine where that's going to head, you know. Half a billion dollars? He's just so hard. It's so hard to quantify because there's never been anybody like him before. No. I mean, he's an elite pitcher. He's an elite hitter. And you get two for the price of one. It's probably going to cost you two for the price of two. <laughs> <laughs> like you say, if he was just the hitter that he is, what would you sign him for? If he was just the pitcher that he is, what would you sign him for? He's making $30 million this year. Yeah. Three two. And hit hard and into center field a base hit. He's two for three. Well, even as it stands now, and we mentioned this last night, Otani was grossly underpaid his first few years. But when you combine his current salary and his endorsements, he is the highest paid player in baseball. And there is absolutely no question that is going to continue and that these numbers are going to only explode in the coming year. And the reason he was overpaid was he didn't go through the posting system. So he didn't have a big contract. I think he signed for about $3 million as a free agent coming over here, and he didn't have the bidding like right. Matsuzaka and, you know, the Tanaka had when they first came over here. Those guys had big contracts when they came over because there was a posting system and free agent bidding, and teams are going back and forth. He would have had to have waited longer to come over here if he had wanted to go through the posting system and then get the big money, but he wanted to come over as soon as he could, regardless of the fact that uh, the salary would be a lot lower. And obviously it's turned out great. He's going to be fine. <laughs> but um, I mean, he's just such a talent. He brings in so many marketing opportunities for a team, so many other sources of revenue as well. And you mentioned the Dodgers. A lot of thought that they cleared out some salaries and let some people go to prepare for this coming off season to make a real run at Shohei Ohtani. Yeah, and you know, I've got to believe that Seattle's going to be in the mix as well, given their link to Ichiro, of course. Kenji Jojima, the catcher that signed with the Mariners. Rendon has popped it up. Bichette backpedaling, and he makes the catch one day. Sign of activity in the Blue Jay bullpen today. Zach Pop is now on the Yeah, when you think about Otani, it's not like there are 20 teams, I wouldn't think, who would be in on the bidding. You're probably talking about five, six, seven teams. And now here comes John Schneider. Looks like he is going to make the move with Renfro coming up and already having hit the ball hard twice off Kikuchi. So. Start number two does not go the way that start number one went for you, say Kikuchi, as he leaves with the Blue Jays down by six.
Bar is a new place to be seen. Grab a cocktail and perch above the visitor's bullpen with unprecedented views to catch all the action up close. This space is an ode to the many great catches that have been made throughout the years in the Rogers Center. Get your tickets today and witness the next great catch. The Catch Bar. I just can't even imagine how much that's going to change the personality of yeah. Rogers Center. Yeah. And it was a state-of-the-art building when it opened up in 89, and then it got kind of old, kind of quick as the other new retro-style stadiums came into vogue. But now, to add that type of atmosphere into the ballpark, I think it's going to be terrific. It's going to be young and lively yeah. out in the outfield, that's for sure. Here's Zach Pop into the game. 6 nothing Angels, runner at first, one out. Hunter Renfro the bat. You know what they should have there at the catch bar? Mm. A frequent flyer program. <laughs> <laughs> huh? All right. Yeah? Yeah? You, you go, I'm a regular here yeah. at the catch, yeah. So buy 10 margaritas, get one free, something no, like no, that? No, no, just the games. You know, you, oh, come okay. to, you, know, you come to a game and all that stuff. I, I think that'd be terrific. Yeah, I'm a regular here at the catch bar. You're not cool enless you hang out, unless you hang right. out at the catch bar. Like get your passport stamped every time Absolutely, you go in there. Absolutely, yeah. So, right. You should be in the marketing department. I like that idea. I think that's good. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> I don't think there's anything wrong with the margarita idea either. The oh, no, 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 no. Also. Yeah. We could package the two together. Yeah, we could sample a yeah. salted rim yeah. glass, and, and that would be good. As the as the execs back at the ballpark right now are going, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Just call the game. Check swing. The appeal didn't go, and it's two and two. I'm really looking forward to seeing it. Yeah, it's going to be fun. I mean, we have been there so many times for so long, and it has been the same. And now, of course, it's going to be quite a bit different. The 2-2 with the runner going. That's a foul ball off the foot of Renfro. So Otani will retrace his steps back to first. Renfrew took that swing on that sinking fastball, hit it right down into his foot. And then uh, Otani is running on the pitch. He had a terrific jump, but they hit him, banged it right off his foot. And then it looked like he was disgusted with himself. So why did they do that? So he's asked for time, and he's still trying to regroup. Tani running again. And it's hit hard but foul down the left field line. Renfro is starting to heat up. Yep. He's been on a lot of pitches the last two games. So Tani runs for a second time. Renfro was right on the slider. Coming into this series, Renfro had a little bit of a slow stop, and the Blue Jays have gotten them hot. Otani again retraces his steps to first base. Not going here, and it's popped up. Bichette glasses down there and makes the catch. Two down as we send it down to Arden. Well, guys, Zach Pop looked exceptional in last night's ball game. Really effective slider. Fastball was up to 97, but this is a very interesting test for him coming back with the day appearance after a night game. You might remember he faced something like this in spring when he looked great against the Detroit Tigers in a night appearance, but then the next day he pitched against the Yankees. Stuff was down a little bit, gave up back-to-back -back home runs against Aaron Judge and Anthony Rizzo, so a very interesting test here. Arden, uh, a good point. All, everybody's He's got to go back to back at times and see how it works out. Here's a ground ball down to third and dug out at first by Vladdy doing the splits. Brandon Drury is retired. Matt Chapman's going to give Vladdy a big hug when he gets into the dugout, no doubt. The Gold Glover with a terrific play.
opportunity to celebrate one of your favorite Blue Jays. On Wednesday, the first 50,000 fans will receive a Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Gold Glove bobblehead presented by TD. Visit BlueJays.com slash tickets now. Why is it a bobblehead of Vladdy doing the splits? Because he can do the splits. Yeah, he has really made a nice transition across the diamond over to first base. And, you know, as consistent as Matt Chapman is with his throws, Vladdy is still aware there could be a short hop every once in a while. He's terrific at digging those out. I mean, every day they would take low throws off a pitching machine or a fungo and practice that over at first base. He and Spencer Horwitz did it all spring long every single day. George Springer leading off the sixth for the Blue Jays against Reed Detmers who through five innings has allowed just two hits has walked one and has struck out five. You know, Detmer has done some special things early in his career. We mentioned his no hitter as a 22 year old. He also had an immaculate inning when he struck out three Texas Rangers on nine pitches. That was on July 31st. And there's only been two other pitchers that have had immaculate innings pitching in an angel uniform. When you think about it. Garrett Richards and the other guy is kind of a slam dunk. Nolan Ryan. Ryan yeah, you figure he would have had a few. Just outside and a full count on Springer. And another chopper foul over near the Angel dugout. Springer struck out in the first inning on a hard slider down and in, and then he struck out swinging in the third inning on a curveball. Curveball was just 76 miles an hour, so Dickmer hasn't thrown many curveballs, but he's used them in some good spots. Springer aboard on a leadoff walk to bring Bo Bichette to the plate. And one of the nice scenes the last couple of days, Troy Tulowitzki was here in town, and Tulowitzki. And Bo go back to when Tulowitzki was a Rocky and Dante Bichette was the hitting coach and 14 year old Bo was running around taking BP. And that little guy is Taz Tulowitzki, Troy's son. So it used to be Bo taking ground balls with Tulo and now in the offseason because Bo Bichette goes to work out with Troy Tulowitzki every offseason for a while. Now Taz is taking ground balls with Bo. It's like a full you know, circle of life here and I asked Bo. Like, how do you feel about this? And he said, well, it, it's really cool. And of course, I feel an obligation to pay it forward. I mean, Tulo did it for me. And now I want to help Taz. And I said, how good is Taz? And both his eyes just got big. And he goes, he's really good. He's really good uh, defensively. And, you know, Tulo has memories of 14 year old Bo hitting bombs at Coors Field. A roller in the hole and in the left, a base hit. It's kind of cool seeing you know, seeing the connection between the two families. And look at how similar the numbers are for Troy Tulowitzki and Bobachet through their first four seasons in the big leagues. And they were both 21 when they started that run. And you can see Bo has a couple more home runs. Tulo has a few more RBIs. The OPS is exactly the same. It's kind of interesting. We talk about the Rockies and Bo on this day 30 years ago. The Rockies played their first home game at Mile High Stadium and had 80,227 right. people there. And Dante Bouchette was in the lineup. Dante went one for three with an RBI. They played that game against Montreal. Yeah. I think the first when the Blue Jays were drawn four million, the Rockies were drawn four million, yeah. I believe, a couple of times. So. Here's Vladdy, first and second, nobody out. One of the funny things that Tulowitzki told me yesterday about Bo, and I said, what do you remember about him being there? He said, he wasn't as driven as he is now. Like, he he liked being there, but he, he kind of wanted to play, but he didn't want to do the work. And, and and I went to Bo, and he goes, yeah. He goes, my dad would have to force me to go to the cage. He was 14. He was 14. Yeah, not as focused. Right. He's a teenager. Totally different vibe about him. Look, and Vladdy gets hit, and is hopping on the one leg and is down. 
Trying to put some weight on that left leg and trying to stay in the game. Oh, he's not coming on this day. <laughs> oh, hit him on the toe. I've got to hit him on the kneecap, man. Yeah, that's bad enough to get hit on the toe, but it's better on the toe than on the kneecap. Yeah, it's one of those things that could hurt like crazy, but maybe go away fairly quickly. Hopefully nothing serious. He's trying to put more weight on it. Here you'll get a better look. Oh, yeah, right on the toe and missed that shin guard. But, I mean, obviously, it can be a significant injury as well. But, boy, you take one off the kneecap, but no telling what might happen. So he's going to stay in the game. He's just making his way down to work first. But he was in some pain there for a while. And just the way he kind of was going to punch the grass there. You could tell how much it was hurting, but he'll stay. It's a huge sigh of relief for uh, everybody who follows this team. And meanwhile, the bases are loaded now with nobody out. Matt Chapman has singled and walked. He's seen the ball very well. Remember, he walked on a high curveball his last time. He's been tracking the baseball pretty well all afternoon. First pitch swinging, and he sends it to deep right center field. Chapman and all of a sudden it's a two run game. Home runs are for Buds. That's what Buds do. And Matt Chapman, he's on fire, and that's his first career grand slam. Let's bottle him up and take him home right now. <laughs> and now Varsho trying to bunt for a base hit, and he will do it with ease. We've talked about it. If you've been watching the games, he loves doing it, especially against lefties. But before we talk about that more, we got to go back to Chapman of the Grand Slam. Matt Chapman has been killing the baseball since the start of the season, and he drives this one over the fence for a Grand Slam home run. I mean, he didn't waste any time. He stepped up there after the long delay and hammers this ball over the wall in deep right center. And then right behind him, Dalton Varshaw drops down a beautiful bunt, and that knocks Reed Detmer out of the game. Boy, how quickly this one has changed.
Certainly changed this game with that 395 foot homer. And this is really more of a straightaway homer that he hit, but it was his goal to use the opposite field more often this season. That's why he added that toe tap to his swing preseason. We've already seen it this year, guys, with three opposite field hits over the first week. Chapman had only 18 opposite field hits in all of 2022. Yeah, as you say, it was a stated goal from day one from, from Matt Chapman. Not something they told him they wanted him to do. Something he told them he wanted to do was to get back to using the whole field. And if you're the kind to go online and look at a spray chart, if you go back to 2018, 19 Chapman's years there, you see the, his best years. You see, that's up, Buck. Boy, oh boy. Again into the booth just to the right of us. They're shooting at us. Wow. <laughs> Um, you can see that he did use the whole field a lot more in 18 and 19 than he did last year. And he said to me, I kind of got away from it last year, and I've got to get back to it. And, boy, uh, between that and the toe tap, improving his timing, and his confidence just has to be sky high right now. Well, you know, we talked about Kikuchi signing late last year. Matt Chapman was in camp with Oakland when he got traded to the Blue Jays. So the transition was pretty quick, and he had to come over and you know, he didn't fit in, but still now he's in a much better place. Runner goes, and Merrifield somehow puts it in play, and he's going to be safe because it gets through the pitcher, Andrew Wentz. Wentz actually thought he caught it. He bends over to pick it up, a routine little tapper back to the mound, and I, I don't know how Wentz hits this ball. Watch where it is. Down and in, and Wentz just kind of reaches for it, and he thought he caught it. He was ready to make a throw, but he didn't have a baseball. Goes right through his legs behind him. Look at him. He's stepping to make a throw, and he's got no baseball. So what an inning it's been. Walk, single, hit batter, grand slam, bun single, and now a little tapper back to the mound. It can't be made a play on so first and second nobody out and here's Kevin Biggio to pinch hit for Santiago Espinal what an inning this has been so far it was six to nothing Detmers was cruising the Blue Jays had had nothing going and now they've got the go ahead run at the plate all of a sudden and Biggio with a high fly ball to center but Trout is going to make the catch. Tagging at second. Varsho will come to third. Merrifield has to hold it first. Yeah, Varsho did a good job of reading that immediately, knowing there's going to be caught in deep center field. Gavin Biggio pinch hitting, hits one deep to center field, but it's going to stay in the ballpark. Varsho quickly goes back to tag at second base. Once he recognized it was going to be an out, he goes back and tags, and he picks up an extra 90 feet. He moves himself over to third with the long out. So now Danny Jansen. Two very good base runners aboard right now for the Blue Jays. You wonder if Merrifield's thinking about something or if John Schneider's thinking about it. As Jansen takes a strike. Yeah, and you know, Danny can put the bat on the ball. You play hit and run right here, even though you have a strike on you. You play hit and run, you take away the opportunity for the Angels to turn it over play, and you might score that fifth run. Draws a throw. And so now Louis Rivera is going through another set of signs after the throw to first base just to make. The Angels think, hey, they might have changed their mind. Maybe they'll put it on. Now a couple of strikes on Jansen. So the inning began with George Springer drawing a walk. Bo Bichette with a base hit to move Springer up to second. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. hit on the toe to load the bases. And then on the first pitch he saw, Matt Chapman with a home run to right center, a grand slam. So it's six to four, first and third, one out. Good take, ball one. The Blue Jays have three come from behind wins already this season, and there's not a whole lot of give up in this ball club. John Snyder keeps telling these players, hey, let's play nine innings and never know what's going to happen. We might get beat on some days, but I don't like losing, just giving up. 
I tell you what, Dan. It's unbelievable how many what fouls are coming back. What'd you do to make these guys mad, huh? <laughs> I mean, there have been yeah. more balls back here than yeah. I've seen in a long time. That went into the uh, the camera booth, two to our left, where the two high home camera operators are. Man, oh, man. And, like, none of them have been a can of corn. Off to the right side. Well, and, and Danny understands now, you know, you've got a batter with two strikes. Obviously, you want to put the ball in play, but you certainly would love to hit the ball in the air. Get it to the outfield. Kevin Kiermeyer on deck. The Blue Jays trying to get all the way back into this one here in the sixth. And a swing and a miss by Jansen for the second out. It's a high slider, and Danny strikes out for a third time. Remember, he'd been out a couple of days battling the stomach bug. So here's Kiermeyer. And again, wondering, does Merrifield go here? Maybe the Angels don't even throw through, right? With the speed of Varsho at third. Up and away. Ball one. Yeah, and that's a good point, too, because you've got the number nine hitter, Kiermeyer. Take a chance if he steals it fine. If he doesn't steal it, Kiermaier leads off the next inning. He got speed at the top of the inning in the seventh. Merrifield not going and a miss again. Ball two with George Springer on deck. Now I wouldn't run now because Wance is having a tough time throwing strikes. You can let Kiermaier cherry pick right here and get a good pitch to hit. Really playing Kiermeyer to pull on the infield. The shortstopper shell is shading up the middle. Two and one. Hit hard down the right field line. A fair ball. Varsho in the score. Merrifield racing around third. The relay to the plate is not in time, and this game is tied. Kevin Kiermaier has been such an addition to this ball club, and he hits it fair, about two feet fair inside the line, and he turns on the Jets. The benefit is that he's got Merrifield running from first base, and he's going to score the tying run. So Kiermaier, with his first two RBIs of the season, has tied it up here in the sixth. What an inning. Don't know yet if it's a two-run double and third on the throw or a two-run triple, but either way, Kiermaier's at third, and it's a brand-new ball game here in Anaheim. Go Blue Jays. Yeah. Ooh. So the Angels fans again, they've been getting on Springer all weekend long. That tends to happen to him in any American League West division ballpark. But you're right, we're a long way from home and a discernible let's go Blue Jay champ. Looks like Kiermeyer's been credited with a triple. I'll tell you, with you know, Merrifield showed up middle of last year. Of our show's new, Kiermaier's new. So three guys who haven't been here all that long, flying around the bases, like guys who just bring a different element to this. Absolutely, team. it's such a good offense when you have speed. You can do so many things to get yourself back in the game. Springer pops it up for the first baseman Drury, and that'll end the top of the six. But what an inning it is for the Blue Jays. They were down six to nothing until Matt Chapman did a grand slam to make it six to four. Kevin Kiermeyer with a two-run triple, and it's six-six.
about the base running in that last half inning. Whit Merrifield getting to home from first and Kevin Kiermaier getting into third on what's been scored as a triple. Here are your Blue Jays average sprint speed leaders this year. Kiermaier and Merrifield both up there over 29. George Springer at 29 feet per second as well. Just a little bit below those three at the top of the leaderboard. They're all 33 year olds. Even older in some cases. The Blue Jays guys, they wanted to run the bases more aggressively this season and also field a more veteran and experienced team and those desires are often in opposition with one another but the Blue Jays have found the personnel to do it. Arden thank you yeah just a, a completely different style to this team right now again 30 feet per second is elite 27 is average so you had five guys there all significantly above average as Kevin Biggio remains in the game at second base for Santiago Espinal. Adam Simber is on the mound here in a tie game we hope we hope if you had to step away for a few minutes it wasn't in the last few minutes because you missed a lot. The Blue Jays with six in the sixth to tie it. And Simber facing Luis Renjifo, and I'm sure Adam Simberbuck is thrilled to get back on the mound. Remember, he came in last night, gave up the home run to Mike Trout. You want to get your next appearance as soon as you can. That's a big part of managing. Get the guy right back on the horse as quickly as you can. And John Snyder, he understands all of that. And Simba's going to be a huge part of this bullpen. He was last year. He's going to be again this year. And yeah, he had this point out in last night, but here he is. Pie game right back in there. And that speaks volumes of what the manager thinks of you. You know, I, oftentimes they'll have a doghouse. Guys are getting a doghouse. You don't pitch for a couple of days. You wonder when they're going to pitch again. There's no doghouse for. John Schneider, he needs all of his guys, and he's going to put them right back out there and give them a chance to succeed. Now I'll tell you two other people who are very happy about it. Adam Simber's parents, Adam's from the Pacific Northwest, but his parents have moved to Southern California. Uh, and his mom, Lori, and his dad, Russ, are here. Bumped into them at the, the team hotel the other day. Had a terrific chat with them. You can understand why Adam is as nice as he is when you meet his parents. And so mom and dad are here and they saw their son give up a home run to Mike Trout last night. But now he's right back on the mound with them watching here in the ballpark this afternoon. Yeah and you know what you just don't want to have that lasting memory last time you saw a kid pitch in person. It was the fact that he gave up a home run but Jimmy Garcia is starting to loosen up for the Blue Jays. A pop up to shallow center Bichette going back and he makes the catch. <laughs> Right as he gets to Kiermeyer, who gives him a big hug. I don't know if, if Kiermeyer called for it, if Bo hurt him, but Bichette will make the catch and everybody's okay. I think Kiermeyer's there just in case Bo loses it. You can see Kiermeyer pulls up and then it kind of stumbles into Kiermeyer. But Kiermeyer pulled up and it was Bo's play all the way. He's just there in case the ball pops out of his glove. The one down for Gio Urshela. You know you don't have to watch many Blue Jay games or even innings to see how guys like Varsho and Kiermaier have fit in as the new guys already. You can see it. Right and you do one thing we should mention after Arden talked about the speed Kevin Kiermaier is coming back from hip surgery and he really worked hard to get his speed back. He says I want to be the fastest and most effective number nine hitter in the league. Catch made by Merrifield. Two down. Logan O'Hoppy is the bat. Dangerous young hitter, rookie catcher, hit his third home run of the season his last time up. Fouls it off. And he's reaching down for that left foot right now. That's causing him some pain. Yeah, the home plate umpire wasn't really sure if it was just a little chopper or if he'd hit the catcher. 
But you can see he hit it off his left toe, and the umpire doesn't call until he looks down the first base umpire to get confirmation. He wasn't really sure what happened there, and no Harvey falls down to the ground, but it's a foul ball off his foot. And now a liner to left center. Varsho back and there. Angels go three up, three down. Nice running catch by Varsho out of the alley. almost over and that means the home opener for the Blue Jays is not far away the home opener presented by TV Tuesday night watch it on Sportsnet and for those attending the game make sure to get there early all kinds of pregame ceremonies and you gotta get there so you get your freaking prior program working <laughs> <laughs> did you not see that email that they sent us saying ixnay I mean you know. <laughs> 6-6 tie. What an afternoon. What a ball game this has been. Former Blue Jay Ryan Tapera will make his second appearance in the series. Yeah, Tapera missed in the game last night. Threw 19 pitches in an inning of work. Gave up a couple hits. And he has faced the same part of this order. Bo had a base hit against him. And Vladdy popped out. And Matt Chapman hit a double off Tapera. So he's going to face the same three he faced in last night's game. Bo one for three, singled and scored his last time up. And this one will get out of play. You know, we were talking about Bobachet, Troy Tulowitzki, when Matt Chapman so rudely interrupted us by hitting a grand slam and shifting the focus of the game, but we'll forgive him for that. But uh, after Tulowitzki said, yeah, you know, Bo wasn't quite as driven. Then, as he was now, I mean, again, he was 14. He loved to play, but so I went to Bo and I asked him. I said, "Yeah, my dad would have to force me to do this, force me to do that." And he said, "Going to Coors Field as a 14-year-old, and his dad, and Bo said he had very strict rules from his dad. This is what you're allowed to do. This is what you're not. This is when you can talk. This is when you can't." And Bo said, "Being around Troy Tulowitzki and some of the others on that Colorado team, that's where the work ethic." Woo. That's and he got hit. He's wringing out that hand and he's going down to first. But he said that's where the work ethic came from. And it's hard to imagine Bobachet being anything but completely driven to be the best he can be. And fortunately, Buck, that looked like a, a glancing blow, but John Schneider and Jose Ministral are coming out to talk to him. Yeah, and you know what? Anytime you get hit on your hands, your wrist, your fingers, there's always a possibility it could be a significant injury and the throw's going to go to first base. That ball was up and in, and uh, he did a heck of a job of just getting out of the way of it. Going to pull off that glove and have a peek. There's a minister on the trainer out to look along with the manager. Well, you hate to see a guy get hit in the hand because all kinds of little bones in there. Yeah. And again, but it, it appears Bo dodged any serious injury, and he's going to stay in the game. John Schneider's leaving. And now Jose Ministral is leaving, so that's a good sign. 
So now here's Vladdy who got hit on the toe his last time out. And he hits it right off the end of the bat, shallow right, and it's dropping for a base hit. And Bichette read it well off the bat and comes around to third. Well, they're all not hit 100 miles an hour, and this is a timely hit for sure, and Vladdy hits it right off the end of the bat. It's a slider, and Renfro, of course, the right fielder, has to play deep to respect the power. Once Bo sees Renfro was deep in right field, he turns around second and heads over to third, and here, Rouge is coming right back at the Angels here in the seventh. On the corners, nobody out, and look who it is. Matt Chapman is the batter. A grand slam his last time up. slider up and in for ball one when you get as hot as Matt Chapman it seems like the ball slows down when it gets over the hitting zone and it doesn't make any difference what kind of pitch it is because he's hitting the ball right back up the middle to the opposite field and he's talked about the toe tap being something that has made him feel more athletic in the box and given him a much better sense of timing he said Sometimes I'd be out in front my lower half would be gone the toe tap allows me to load allows me to stay back and then I can shift my weight quickly or more slowly based on the picture what I'm seeing out there and now too he says I can make adjustments in the advance take a look at the home run his first career grand slam on the first pitch his last time up Almost 400 feet. You know, he hit one over 400 feet that Trout caught here a couple nights ago. But ball travels well here in the daytime, and he's rewarded. Two and one the count. Two and two. He chased a bad pitch right there, and he knew it. He turned around quickly to the umpire, and so that was up, wasn't it? Now he's talking to himself. Stay back, stay back. Again, here's where. That approach to the opposite field really pays off. Nobody out, and the go ahead run at third. And a slider hit in the air, shallow center field, and this one is going to drop. The shed in to score, and the Blue Jays have the lead. When you're hot, you're hot. And Matt Chapman is red hot. Picks up another RBI that gives him five today. He's three for three with a walk. And the Angels haven't been able to get him out. The pair tried to come right back into that same spot, and Chapman dumps it in front of Mike Trout, and Mo Bichette comes in to score, and just like that, the Blue Jays have the lead. So now it's Dalton Varsho, one for three. Maybe one of the underrated moments of the game, his bunt single last time up. And now he hits a fly ball to deep right field. And caught a leaping catch right at the wall by Renfro to take away a bid for extra bases by Varsho. On the play, Guerrero tags and comes to third. Wow, he just missed it, and Redford does a good job of timing his jump up against the fence and makes the catch. Varsho thinks he's hit it out, but the ball is just not going to carry for him, and he just missed the home run. So it's first and third again now with one out for Whit Merrifield. Whit is one for three, a base hit, and he's also scored a run. Right, and here's where Witt, too, is trying to hit the ball the other way. There's a big hole on the right side of the infield. What you don't want to do as a right-handed hitter is pull the ball on the ground. That is an easy play for the Angels to turn a double play on. So you can see the big gap on the right side of the infield. Take it the other way. Going two. Talk to him, sir. That was a good pitch to hit to the outfit. Ball was up. It was just a little bit late.
six in the sixth to tie it. And one here in the seventh to take the lead. Looking for more. This game's had a little bit of everything, hasn't it? A little bit of everything. Yeah. I mean, the Blue Jays looked like they were dead in the water. And the Reed Detmers looked like he was going to throw a shutout. And then six runs into sixth. One and two the count. Up and in. To Perez command, not really good right now. Two and two. Well, I think he's trying to pitch Merrifield inside because of the situation. He doesn't want Witt to have anything out over the plate that he can drive to the outfield. Guerrero at third, Chapman at first. Look out. Just missed Flatty. <laughs> Again. Yelling at him and pointing <laughs> to fair territory. Hit it over there. Yeah. Hey, I don't know how he got out of the way. Vladdy's already been hit on the toe, and he almost got hit with his rocket down to third. Hey, over that way. <laughs> over that way. I'm down here. Come on. In the hole, it's short. And through for a base hit. In to score Guerrero, and it's eight to six. Tough lineup, man. It's a tough lineup. And I tell you, Witt drives it through the left side underneath the glove of Urshela. But watch how he busts it out of the box. He doesn't know it's gone through the infield. He's just trying to beat out the double play. And a bench. Loves it. Speed kills, man. And it has really been an asset for the Blue Jays this afternoon. It is now 8-6, to six and Phil Nevin has gone back to the mound to make another pitching change. Two on, one out. Hunter Renfro with a two-run homer in the first. That made it three to nothing for the Angels. Shohei Otani with a two-run homer in the third. That made it five to nothing. They would go up six to nothing before the Blue Jays suddenly came to life in the sixth inning with Matt Chapman's grand slam getting them on the board. Kevin Kiermaier's triple tying the game. And then they have gone ahead here in the seventh. Chapman with a loop RBI single to make it seven to six. When Merrifield has just singled to make it eight to six, and forcing another pitching change. Or they have they just keep on coming right now. And they're doing everything, you know. One home run, the grand slam, but opposite field base hits, hit batters. They take their walks. They have scored. They've gone first to third. They've scored from first. A little bit of everything offensively from the Blue Jays this afternoon. So now Aaron Loop will face Kevin Biggio. Remember, Biggio came on as a pinch hitter for Santiago Espinal an inning ago. And the runners are going, and they will take second and third, a double steal without a throw. Boy, what a great time to do that. Pitcher just comes into the game. He hasn't had a chance to really think about the situation, and the Blue Jays take off. 
Chapman from second. Merrifield follows him into second. And now two more runners in scoring position. This is a fun way to play baseball, really folks. Is. For fans to watch and for players to play, inside that clubhouse, they are excited about the style of play. Infield has to come in now. Alejandro Kirk has come out of the on deck circle in Danny Jansen's spot. And again, Jansen has been really under the weather the last couple of days with a stomach bug, and, and he was back in the lineup today. Uh, has struck out all three times, and obviously uh, just not feeling great. So John Schneider is going to make the change. Now back by Biggio. Yeah, and, and you know, having been there, when you are out of the lineup, you're sick, you're under the weather, then you play on a hot afternoon and it saps your energy quickly and I'm sure that's been the case with Danny. And yeah, he didn't look great at the plate obviously and struck out three times but I'm sure he's not 100 percent by any means. Swing and a miss. Biggio strikes out two down. This will be interesting to see what Phil Devin does when Kirk is announced as a pinch hitter. They've got a base open. And Kiermaier is on deck. I'd be surprised if they pitch to him. Yeah, it looks like Nevin just put the four fingers up there. Well, Hoppy is looking over, and now the home plate umpire, Alex McKay, is making everybody aware of it. There's the intentional walk of Paul Buck. Yeah, I mean, that's a natural move. Once he was announced into the game, Nevin was waiting to be stepped in the box, and now Kiermaier thrown down the gauntlet. Kevin came through last time with a huge two-run triple. Base is loaded, two out. And way outside, ball one. Gilman has actually faced Luke a lot. He's four for 12 against him. Probably back in the Rays Jays days, right? When Loop was in Toronto. Yep. He'd be the kind of guy, Kiermaier would be the kind of guy Loop would come into the game for sometimes, right? As a specialist back before the three batter rule. Little flare. And another one drops in. And two more runs will score. Chapman and Merrifield in, and it is 10 to 6. Kevin Kiermaier hitting in the nice spot. It's hit just off the end of the bat, and it's it in front of the left fielder. Two runs are going to come in to score with two outs. And how about the double steal on the first pitch? Before Luke really had a chance to settle in. A double steal. Kiermaier drops in two more. He's got four ribbies today. Chapman has five. Kiermaier has four. Before the sixth inning, the Blue Jays had no runs on two hits. They have ten runs on eight hits in the last two innings. And not all of them have been rockets. Now, Chapman's grand slam was obviously Kiermaier's triple was a very hard hit ball. We talked about how kind of the baseball gods weren't smiling on them. The ball in the sun, Kikuchi in the you know the first inning and all that. Well, the baseball gods have kind of evened it up here in the seventh, Buck, with uh, three bloops that have dropped in. Yeah, and you know what? Bloops are a product of good approaches. They take tough pitches. The pitch from Loop to Kiermaier was a pretty good pitch, but he hung in there and gets a piece of it and drives it into left field. The second time in this game, nine Blue Jays have hit in an inning. They sent ten men to the plate in the sixth, and now Springer is the ninth to bat here in the seventh. And the Blue Jays have Jimmy Garcia, Eric Swanson, and Jordan Romano all with a day off under their belt. Good management. <laughs>
no foul. And you know, that happens a lot for fans when they sit back and say, boy, this would be a good time to use Romano. Why don't they use Swanson here? How about Jimmy Garcia? And the manager has to think about how all of this fits in the puzzle. You've got a game here, and you say, well, I, I might have to sacrifice an inning or a game here to win two out of three. Popped up. And is somebody going to get to this one? Renhefo will, and finally the side is retired. But the Blue Jays score four more. Kiermeyer in the middle of it again. 10-6 Blue Jays. Well, with time, a prospect in the Blue Jays organization, and this is Yasmer Zulueta, who got the start today for Triple A Buffalo. Uh, he's kind of in a hybrid role, a bulk role, so he went three innings, velocity around 94 95 with a fastball, one hit, struck out six. And a guy who maybe didn't have quite the spring that he and the team were hoping for, so they're going to build him up at Triple A, but this is a this is a name to remember. This is definitely a guy who could be with the big club at some point this season. Absolutely, and they don't know whether or not to stretch him out a little bit further, but at least if he could be a guy that could pitch three innings, he'd be a big asset to move his bullpen right now at this point. He has been a starter in the past, and he just wasn't really healthy. I think he's still dealing with that knee surgery a couple years ago, and I'm feeling 100%, but hopefully he'll have a good start to his season and become a interesting on for the Blue Jays. Jimmy Garcia checks into the game. It is now 10 to 6 Blue Jays going to the bottom of the seventh. Garcia last worked on Friday night. Worked the seventh inning. Three up, three down. Alejandro Kirk remains in the game to catch after pinch hitting for Danny Jansen and it's top of the order for the Angels. And I think we have a timing violation. No, he no, had a you're wristband right. on. Yeah, yeah you're he right. had some kind of bracelet or something on him. Uh, <laughs> he, he, pointed he pointed at his, his wrist. wrist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he meant his yeah, wrist right. and not mine. <laughs> so it's Ward, Trout, and Otani coming up. And a fastball to start him. And we are seeing the role that Jimmy Garcia is in. Not necessarily the, quote, eighth inning guy, although that's not really a thing anymore. But it, it's like Garcia gets the top of the order the time before Romano comes in. He's often in here to face the best hitters on the other team. Right. And you mentioned he pitched on Friday night. He came in and struck out the number nine hitter and then got Ward and Trout in order. Three up, three down quickly. There is 14 pitches in that inning work.
Ward is 0 for 3. And the count is 2 and 2. And a swing and a miss to get him out number one. Garcia's got that terrific fastball that plays up a lot better than it might indicate on the radar gun because of location. The count was 98. High heater, and he gets the desired results. A good strikeout to start the inning. And now Trout, two for three with a couple of singles. series four for nine with a couple of home runs all right here's where you're really aggressive to Mike Trout you've got a four run cushion I mean challenge him and you can throw him to his strength in this situation just you can't walk him you can't encourage the Angels just go right after him Boy, well, made a good pitch and didn't get the call. Two and one. Trout has drawn nine walks so far this season. And, yeah, he's a dangerous hitter, but right there he got a favorable call. That looked like a strike. On the inside corner, two and two. Got him. How about 99? Two down. Yeah, his fastball has been better this spring than we have seen in the past. And he threw a 98 mile hour heater earlier and he dials it up even a little bit harder. 99 to punch out my track. Second time he's gone down swinging this afternoon. Here's Otani. The composition of this bullpen is very impressive. The way they can mix and match. Save good arms and you don't have to pitch everybody every night. You don't have one or two guys that you can count on. There's three or four, maybe five guys down there. They're pretty confident in every night. But that pitch that Garcia struck Trout on, struck Trout out on, is one of the five hardest pitches he has thrown in his major league career. His all-time high is 99.1. That was 98.8. He is really throwing hard this season. A strike to Otani, and it is three and two. Second, Biggio has it. And how about Jimmy Garcia? Two strikeouts and a ground out against the top of the Angel lineup.
locations tomorrow on Monday Night Hockey. The Jets are in a dogfight for a wild card spot of the West. They host the Sharks. The Leafs are in Florida to face the Panthers, who are trying to hold on to a wild card spot in the East. And the Hurricanes try to lock up a division title as they face the Senators. We go to the eighth inning here at Angel Stadium. Dan Schulman, Buck Martinez, Art Zwelling. It is the Blue Jays 10 in the Angels 6 and the fifth pitcher of the game for the Angels is right-hander Jaime Maria. Maria pitched the game last night through 15 pitches over an inning of work. Maria came in to finish out the fifth and got two outs in the sixth and then would turn it over to Ryan Tapera. Tapera winds up getting charged with four earned runs in a third of an inning in this game today. Aaron Luke finished off the seventh, and now Bo Bichette leading off the eighth against Berea. Goes one for three. He's been hit by a pitch and has scored a couple of runs. Two and one. After Bichette, Guerrero, and Chapman. Close, but no, and it's three and one. Grounded down to third. And Rendon will make the throw across the diamond to get him one down. Bringing up Vladimir Guerrero Jr. This is Friday night. A foul ball just by him. And he's telling the hitter, straighten it out. And then it happened again today with Whit Merrifield at the plate. <laughs> uh, that's why you line up in foul territory. Ooh. I've not seen uh, Vladdy swing like that at a pitch there very often at all this season. Yeah, you're quite. He had made up his mind he was going to swing, and that ball backed up on him. Looked like it was a slider that backed up on him. And a check swing tapper. Tried to put the brakes on the swing, but he couldn't. Two down. Yeah, he didn't see either one of those pitches very well out of the hand of the pitcher. And you could see a very tentative check swing tapper back to the mound. This guy didn't have many check swing tappers. No. It's nothing but ropes, frozen ropes all over the diamond. Matt Chapman, three for three with a walk. He's got a grand slam. He's driven in five. At the moment, Matt Chapman has the highest batting average in baseball at 500, the second highest OPS behind only Adam Duvall of the Red Sox. He's got the most hits in the majors. He's got the most doubles in the majors. He's second in extra base hits. You get the idea. Bo. Vladdy and Chapman in this series as you see Eric Swanson getting ready for the bottom of the eighth. Bo, Vladdy, and Matt Chapman have combined to go 18 for 36 in this series. With some damage. They have hit four home runs and driven in 12. Boy, a hot shot on a bounce back to the mound. A very nice play made by Berea as the Blue Jays are set down in order.
presented by authority of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership. And may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership. This series began Friday night, opening night for the Angels. Vlad Sr. threw out the first pitch. You go back in time to when Sr. was an Angel, and there's Junior with the, the cap on backwards. And look how it's all turned out all these years later. Pretty special weekend, opening weekend for the Angels. The Blue Jays are looking to take two out of three. And how about the bullpen? Eric Swanson here to start the eighth inning. We go back to... The Gucci, he got the last batter he faced the Gucci's in the entire nine in a row. The Gucci got Rendon to pop up, and then Zach Pop, Adam Simber, and Jimmy Garcia have retired, retired nine straight. Anthony Rendon, one for two with a walk. Four, five, six, Rendon, Renfro, and Drury. Shadows are starting to move out from behind the stands, behind home plate, towards the plate. Still a ways away from getting there. Swanson pitched on Friday night, gave up a double to Otani, then retired the next three in order. Renfro, Lamb, and Brandon Drury. Rendon lifts one rather down the right field line, and Merrifield unable to get there in time. He was trying to find it. He couldn't find it in the sky for a while and then just couldn't quite get there down the line. Yeah, it looks like it tipped off the end of his glove, but he was running out of room very quickly in a long run. And you're right, he started out not really sure where that baseball was. But a tough day for outfielders. Not so tough for hitters. No. So back to the plate goes Rendon with a count of two and one. Sends one to left field, but Varsho is right there, and he makes the catch. One down. Now, Eric Swanson's got a good arm, obviously, and that's why the Blue Jays picked him up in that deal from Seattle. But he throws a hard fastball, got a very good splitter, but he also turns his body to the hitter, and that makes it very difficult for the hitter to pick up his release point. And that ball comes at you. He's got a nice short arm stroke, and it's difficult to really find the baseball. There's that turn, and then the ball jumps at you, and he's got good command. Renfro two for three, a two-run homer in the first. They got Swanson to get more swing and a miss toward the back end of the bullpen. And so far, so good. Coming off a great year with the Mariners last year. Really kind of developed that splitter to the level it's at now in the last couple of years and it has transformed his entire career. Popped up. Shallow right. Guerrero's there. Biggio's there. And it's Biggio's ball all the way. Glad he just fooled it around. Two down. Glad he made glad he. Yeah. <laughs> he was out there right next side. He's having some kind of fun. Look at Matty. He says, I'm back here just in case. I'm going to catch it. No, Kevin's going to catch it. But he's having a good day. Yeah. Kevin's seen that. They've known each other a long time. He's seen that act before. Two down for Brandon Drury. You know, and, and to the point that some have made that this team is, quote, not as fun as they were last year. First of all, that guy's about eight eight people's worth of fun all by himself over at first base. And I guess fun comes in different packages for everybody. Kiermaier back and can't make the play. It is gone. Drury hits it out to straight away seven to make it ten to seven. Brandon Drury's first home run of the season. Dead center. For three with a couple of strikeouts before that last plate appearance. Just a fastball kind of right over the heart of the plate. Here by timed his lead, but it's well beyond his reach. So now Ren Hifo. Hit 
hits are even at 10 apiece. Blue Jays up 10 to 7. 0 oh 2. We've got dueling fan bases right now between Let's Go Angels and Let's Go Blue Jays trying to get in there. As Swanson strikes out Ren Hefo to win the eighth inning. And the Blue Jays will take a three run lead to the ninth. Varsho is set to lead off the ninth. We want to go back to what Dan called the underrated moment of this ball game, and there's been no shortage of them in this one, but how about the drag bunt from Dalton Varsho? It's a bit of a lost art in the game, but it is very much a part of Varsho. Since 2021, he is now successful on 16 of 17 drag bunt attempts. No other mlb -er has more than 11 attempts. It really is remarkable, and I know we've talked about it a lot, but it's something you don't see players do very often, and it's not a fluke, it's not an accident. This is a big part of who he is. And back to kind of the, the fun comment, these new guys have brought with them a style of play that is different. And the speed and the attention to detail. I mean, Kiermaier and Varsho, both tremendous defensive players, both great base runners, Varsho, you know, the bunting is fun. It's a different kind of thing, and he's apparently the best in baseball at it when you look at the numbers that Arden was talking about. They play a different style. They're going to win games in different ways, but this is a brand of baseball that I think is very easy to get on board with. And it also plays into the new rules very effectively, and, and I think, too, it puts pressure on the defense. We haven't seen baseball played like this in a number of years. So now the defense is going to have to hurry up their plays, whether it's on the infield or in the outfield. When Varsho, Kiermaier, Whit, Merrifield, when they hit the ground ball, they're always thinking about two. So that puts pressure on the outfield. Just play clean in the outfield. So, yeah, it's going to change the way people play against the Blue Jays. They just can't sit back and expect the Blue Jays to swing for the fences all the time. It's a different team. And I will argue to I'm blue in the face that this is a fun way to play baseball. I will be right there beside you saying the same thing. And I think they are capable of winning games in different ways this year that maybe they weren't in the past. That There were times last year, you know, they could bludgeon a team, but they could get shut down. Varsho, Kiermaier, Merrifield, a full year of Merrifield with the base running and, and again the different ways that they can help a team. They can beat different kinds of teams in different ways. All right. The Angels have hit eight home runs in this series. The Blue Jays have hit five and the runs are even at 19 apiece. And the Blue Jays have a chance to win the series here. They can close out the Angels in the ninth inning. Varsho at first stole 16 bases last year. Merrifield, a great stop at third by Rendon. They won't turn the double play, but a 
Fantastic play by Rendon to take an extra base hit away from Merrifield. Uh, one of the best you will see, and Witt absolutely scalded this ball. The ball is almost past Rendon when he catches it and fires a strike to Renhefo. And only the speed of Merrifield allowed him to beat out that return throw to first base. I mean, he had to be thinking double as soon as he hit that ball. Denied by a terrific play at third. So now Biggio in his third at bat. Ooh. They got him. Yeah. Merrifield was going. He was going on the first pitch, and the Angels sniffed it out. Yeah, he was bouncing off there, and Berea timed his throw to first perfectly. And his momentum was going towards second, and he couldn't get back in time. Well, and that's an interesting kind of next step is word will get around quickly about the style of play the Blue Jays are using this year, and the other teams will will try to counter that. Remember the double steal was on the first pitch back in the seventh inning, and now the throw over picks off Merrifield in the first pitch in the ninth as Jordan Romano is getting ready for a day at the office. Yeah, but, but I'll continue to run the bases aggressively if I'm John Snyder because catchers are going to take a while to catch up. And catchers haven't been worried about the stolen base for a while, and there aren't that many guys that can really throw well. I mean, more often than not, we see catchers bounce the ball to second base, so yeah, I'd keep running. Two two to Biggio. And he doesn't like it, and you can understand why. It's a few inches off the outside corner, but it is strike three call. 10-7 going bottom nine. Bobblehead game to the next level with the Romano and Jansen handshake bobblehead giveaway. Be one of the first 15,000 fans on Monday, April the 24th, and receive this must have collectible. Visit bluejays.com slash tickets now. It's not Romano and Jansen at the moment, it's Romano and Kirk, but it's Romano. And generally, when he is in the game, that is a good sign for the Blue Jays, and he's coming in to protect a three run lead here in the bottom of the ninth. Jared picked up his fourth save on Friday night here. Really been locked down. He's efficient. He hasn't walked himself into jams. He retired the side end order on Friday night. About eight, nine, or seven, eight, nine in the batting order for the Angels to close out that 4 3 win. Gave Chris Bassett his first win of the season. Now he's trying to make the Blue Jays a winner on his 10 game road trip. Gio Urshela, Logan Ohapi, and Taylor Ward, 8 9 and 1 in the Angel lineup. And the first pitch is dropped into center field, a base hit. So the leadoff man aboard now for Ohapi. 
Well, obviously, the focal point for Romano is in the two and three spot in the lineup. You've got to really yep. focus on trying to get out of it before you get to Trout and Otani. Yeah, be as good as you can be before they come up. Well, Hoppy one for three, homered in the fourth. 10 7 bottom nine. The ribbon boards here telling the fans to make noise and they oblige. Ground ball foul up the third baseline. Well, happy getting that double play back in the second inning. After Rochella had singlet to center field and a ground ball to shortstop. And the 0-2, another foul off. UJ started the season one and three, won four in a row before losing last night. Five and four at the moment, as Buck mentioned, trying to win the series and have a winning road trip heading home for the opener on Tuesday night. No two again. And a swing and a miss to get Ohapi one down. Just mentioned Tuesday night, that is the home opener, and we will have it for you, of course, here on Sportsnet. With Blue Jays Central starting at 6 Eastern, and Alec Manoa will throw a pitch shortly after 7 o'clock. Also, the last Tim and Friends show leading into Blue Jays Central. Everybody will be down at the ballpark. Everybody excited about the home opener Tuesday night. When the Tigers come to town. Vladdy Guerrero will get his gold glove prior to that game. Alejandro Kirk will get his silver slugger award prior to the game. So make sure you get there early. Lots of festivities taking place before the home opener. The batter Taylor Ward, it's 0-1. 99 from Romano. Boys are fired up this afternoon, Bob. Yeah, they are, and they've had a tough trip. And it started in St. Louis, went to Kansas City, and wrapping things up here in Anaheim. Ground ball, double play, leave Mike Trout standing in the on deck circle. Good slider. Oh, he's straight down. He's got two different sliders. He can manipulate them based on changing his his wrist, his hand a little bit. It's not grip on the ball. The straight top to bottom one like that. He says, I, I try to throw a curveball. I put in my head the curveball, and it's a little slower, a little bit of a bigger break, and more straight down. Yeah, that's kind of like Juan Guzman's slider, where everybody used to think it was a forkball. I never threw a forkball in his life. Romano having trouble with the crack. And here's the pitch call from Kirk. 3 2. And he walked him, and that is going to bring Mike Trout to the plate as the tying run. Chapman doing all the talking in that meeting initially, and then he hits back to his position. Romano and Kirk will finish it off. Trout's one for two in very limited at bats against Romano. And I'm sure Matt Chapman had something to the effect. You're the man. We're going to win this thing. Let's go. And a slider for a strike. The 0 1. Fastball, and he beat him 0 2. 97 down and away. And Trout's a low ball hitter, but if you make good pitches, you can beat him. A 
Already two home runs in the series. 0 oh, 2 pitch. Up and away, ball one. I like that fastball. He went back to back with fastballs. That last one was 97. Now, Trout's really in between. And it's difficult for him to sit back and guard against that slider if he throws 98. And he got him. A slider to get him for the second down. Good sequence of pitching. Foul by Kirk. Two fastballs and then set up this slider and he throws it in a terrific spot. Trout strikes out for a third time and Romano pitched it perfectly. But of course, that's one very dangerous hitter retired and another one in the box right now in Shohei Otani. Otani with a home run back in the third inning. The Blue Jays and out away. Did he go? He did not, says Tony Randazzo. 2 and 0. Oh. And again, Romano trying to make sure he can hear the sign with the receiver that he's got in his hat. Now ready to go. Inside again with a slider, three and zero. Oh. Now obviously Otani's not taking him. They have the green light. Pitch on the way. Ball four to load the bases. The tying run goes down to first, and here comes Anthony Rendon. You know what? I mean, it's it's not what you want. It's not a bad. But it's not necessarily, you know. <laughs> okay, Shohei, go down to first, yeah. and now they'll have a, a game plan for Anthony Rendon. Yeah, now I know where you're at. Yeah, you're over at first, and now I know you represent the winning run. Represent the tie run. Excuse me, Rendon represents the winning run. But now Pete Walker out to formulate a game plan against Anthony Rendon. Don't awfully good, but he's not Shohei Otani. No. Rochelle is at third. Ward's at second. Otani at first. Three run lead for the Blue Jays. Two down in the bottom of the ninth. Boy, he checked the swing on a good slider, and it's ball one. He picked that one up quickly. Slider in there, one and one. Another slider, and it misses high, ball two. Stressful bottom of the ninth. Foul ball. Boy, what an effort by Chapman, and is he okay? Matt Chapman is still down. Yeah, and he may have. I don't know if he twisted his ankle or got a cramp or what, but he's stretched now. He got a cramp, yeah. I think. Hopefully, it's a cramp and not a. Well, Muzzy said, I'm all right. I think he got a cramp when he went into foul ground. He's going to continue to stretch out that left hamstring. But he knows his body well. How quickly as he had to move into foul ground, then he slips a little bit. Oh, he got his leg kind of yeah. caught underneath. Him. And he's back in his position. Romano getting ready to go back to work. Two and two the count. And he hit him. Threw him a fastball and hit him to force in a run and make it 10 to 8. Uh, this really complicates things. That fastball never close to being 
a strike, and Rendon couldn't get out of the way. And they're going to have a pinch runner over at first base. That's Brett Phillips. So Rendon is out. He'll get an RBI. And now here's Renfro. The problem is you got great speed at second in Otani. Strike one to Renfro. So the tying run at second, the winning run at first. And the 0-1. And that's a fair ball down the line. Two runs will score, and the game is tied at 10. Just inside the bag at third, and it's down in the corner. Otani scores easily. Phillips is flying toward third base, gets to the stop sign. Renfro sees it fair down into the corner. And we're back to square one. Brandon Drew. Winning run at third. And quite a scene here at Angel Stadium as the Angels have scored three times. Inside. And it is 2 0. Oh. Two walks and a hit batter here in this bottom of the ninth. And three runs into time. That's in there, two and one. Swing and a miss with a fastball up and in, two and two. Ramana's got a good fastball, and you can see how late Drury was with that heater. And now Drury has asked for time. Two and two, two outs. Game on the line here in the bottom of the night. And he got him. Drury strikes out to end the inning. But we are going to extra innings here in Anaheim. Blue Jays and Angels tied at 10. away with a three-run lead but the Angels have tied the game and for the first time this year the Blue Jays will play an extra inning game a wild game here to wrap up this 10 game road trip tens everywhere right now in Anaheim well, lots going on here too with the pinch runner 
taking over for Rendon. Anthony's out of the game. With that, Gio Urshela, shortstop, moves to third. David Fletcher comes off the bench. He takes over at short. Kevin Vigio is going to be the runner at second base in extra innings, obviously. And Kevin Kuhnauer will bat second. Alejandro Kirk is the scheduled batter. So Biggio at second, Kirk, Kiermeyer, Springer do up. Fletcher, David Fletcher's in the game at short. Rochella to third. Rendon out of the game. Carlos Estevez, the new pitcher. Just another 10 10 game, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Kirk is swinging a foul back, and it's 0 and 1. Estevez pitched in the game last night, pitched the ninth inning. They were the single to Vladdy Guerrero and then Walt Chapman, but was able to close out the game in that 9 5 win for LA. Estevez, the sixth pitcher of the game for the Angels. The Blue Jays have used six already as well. And that's outside, two and one on Kirk. Trevor Richards is up in the bullpen. Hop, Simber, Garcia, Swanson, and Romano have already been used. Fly ball down the right field line, but foul and back out of play. So the remaining relievers in the Blue Jay pen at the moment are Richards, Meza, and Bass. Kirk will use his timeout. So the Blue Jays were down six to nothing, up ten to six, and the Angels come back to tie it and force extra innings. Kirk trying to punch something through the right side and bring home Biggio. Full count. Yeah, the biggest bat for me was walking Otani. And at that point, he wasn't that impactful of a run, but you walk him and then things kind of spun out of control for Romano. Then he hit Rendon and then Renfro delivered a two run double. A high chopper to short. This will advance Biggio. So Kirk retired to run of a third one out. Good read by Cavins. As that ball hit the ground, he broke for third. He was going to hang up for Fletcher. Had to wait for it so Cavins can react immediately. Breaks on contact and does a good job. And they move the runner over, so that'll force the infield in now with Kevin Kiermeyer. Good base running again. Kiermeyer two for four with a triple, a single, and four RBIs. And a swing and a miss, 0 and 1. Vigio a short lead, or Shell is keeping him near the bag. As Kiermeyer sends the ball to deep right field. And it will skip up into the seats for a double. Vigio in to score. What an afternoon for Kevin Kiermeyer, his fifth RBI of the game, and the Blue Jays have the lead. Well, what another great at bat by Kevin Kiermeyer. And the Blue Jays, so many emotional roller coaster rides all afternoon. Up, down, up, down, tied in the tenth, and Kiermeyer stays on that good pitch. He hit a low inside pitch all the way to deep right field, bounces out of play for a ground rule double and RBI. Now George Springer. What a game for Kiermaier. The 1-1. Got to play right side one and two. Second 
five RBI game for Kevin Kiermaier. He also drove in five runs against Cleveland in July of 2021. In that game, he was two for three with a home run and five rubies. And here's one into right center for a base hit. Kiermaier racing home on the RBI single by Springer. It is 12 to 10. George Springer, a little insurance right here. His first hit of the ball game comes in a very timely manner. Extra inning RBI single for Springer. So now Bo Bichette. Bichette one for four, also hit by a pitch. He has scored a couple of runs. Remember, the home team gets a runner at second to start the bottom half of the inning, obviously. So you want to get as many as you can. If they don't get any more, the tying runs at the plate to begin the bottom half of the inning. So you want to pile on as many as you can in the top half. Wow. One and two on Bichette. Guerrero on deck. And looking ahead to the bottom half of the inning, it'll be the seven, eight, and nine hitters in the Angels lineup due up. Well, that's a close take in a two strike count from an aggressive hitter. Now he has such a confident approach at the plate, it's never an issue. And a pretty good eye with two strikes, not a whole lot of movement. Swing and a foul tip, two down. So now Guerrero, one for four, and he's been hit by a pitch today. One from Estevez down and away. Throw to first, back in is Springer. the end of the bat and dropping for a base hit and the fact that he didn't hit it as cleanly as he wanted to probably got him a base hit there as Springer comes around to third well, that is second hit and you're right had it been a regular line drive by Guerrero that probably carries to Mike Trout in center but this one bounces in front of him and Springer running with two outs goes all the way to third so once again, that brings up Matt Chapman having another big afternoon. Three for four with a walk, a home run, five runs driven in. And he has hit everything hard. Chapman has had two games in which he has driven in six. Ironically, both of those games have been against the Angels. And both of them have been right here at Angel Stadium. In 2019, in June, he was three for five with six ribbies. August 10th in 2020, he was three for five with two home runs and six ribbons. Well, he's had a chance now to 
tie his career high in RBIs in a game. First and third, two down. And ball one to Chapman. Right in on his hands at 97, and he fouls it off. You can see how he always keeps his hands inside, trying to inside out that baseball. And that time it was just above his hands where the ball hit the bat. One and two. Springer at third, Guerrero at first, two runs in. Strike three call. But the Blue Jays scored twice. And Kevin Kiermeyer is in the middle of it again. 12 10, going bottom 10. This one ends. The Blue Jays will get on the plane and head home and open up the home portion of the schedule Tuesday night, opening night as they take on the Tigers. Then the Rays, who are 9 and 0 right now and are blowing out everybody. Easy schedule, but they're still blowing out everybody. And then right back on the road for a challenging trip to Houston and the Bronx. Lots of interesting baseball coming. 12-10, bottom of the 10th. Trevor Richards is into the game, looking for the save. I don't know if it can get any more interesting than this game. <laughs> Trevor Richards threw 15 pitches in an inning of work last night. He's basically working to the bottom of the order as he did in last night's game. It will be 7 8 9 Renhifo, Urshela, and Ohap. Ohapi, the catcher. Renhifo for four. So this is not your typical Trevor Richards situation, obviously. Richards has one major league save. It was with the Rays in 2021. But it was one of those saves where it's three innings of effective relief in a game that's, well, it can happen in any score, but the game was out of hand. The game wound up 14 to seven, but he pitched the last three innings and three innings of effective relief, regardless of the score, is a save. So this is not where Trevor Richards is used to being, but he's the man called upon to try to get the last three outs. Yeah, and you know what? Some days you just got to be ready to pitch no matter what the situation is, and I'm sure Trevor is ready to wrap this game up. We mentioned he's pitched the sixth inning in the game, had a strikeout, gave up an infield single to Urshela, and that was it. Brandon Drury is the runner at second. And it's two and two on Renhifo. Again, seven, eight, nine coming up for the Angels. 
And I'm sure you know this by now, but Trout is in the two spot, and Otani is the number three hitter, so they would be due up fifth and sixth this inning. There's a swing and a miss. Gets Renjifo for out number one. Great changeup, and Renjifo with two strikes is still out in front of it. Just 83 miles an hour, well in the strike zone, and he cuts on it and misses. Good start to the inning for Richards. Now Gio Urshela, two for four with a couple of singles. Fastball lined to center, a base hit. Drury held at third. First and third, one out for the Angels. That was kind of interesting. That ball was going to be down all the way, and Drury just kind of moved over to third base. I thought he might try to score on that. Kiermaier thought the same because he just threw the ball back into second. It's really kind of interesting as he stops at third. Of course, the run that matters is the one at first. That's the tying run. This is the winning run at the plate here. And Logan O'Hoppy, the number. As the noise begins to build again here at Angel Stadium. In the dirt for ball one. As you can see, the shadows have now crept across the plate. So you wonder how much more challenging it might be to see the ball right now as a hitter. Change up there, one and one. Not quite challenging yet because the shade is so close to home plate. As you see, Mays are loosening up, but the ball travels in the sunshine most of the way to home. Certainly by the time they have to make a decision. Wow, a good change up there, and Ohapi to a knee, swinging and missing, one and two. Lots of movement on that change up. That one was in the zone and then out of the zone. One, two. Back to the change, and he gets him two down. He has gotten rid of the slider. It's just fastball changeup. He is throwing the changeup up more than he ever has. And there's the movement you see down and away. It starts in the strike zone and then just disappears. 83 miles an hour and the delivery is terrific. Looks like a fastball coming out of his hand. Here's Ward. Again, he is the winning run. The tying run is at first. Again, the Blue Jays are an out away from victory. Mike Trout looms on deck. A strike right at the bottom of the zone, one and one. This has been some kind of baseball game. Back and forth. We've got <laughs> everything for sure. Throw to first and back in easily. There have been five home runs hit in the game. Angels have hit four. Chapman with a grand slam, his first career grand slam. 22 runs on 26 hits. A ball and a strike on Ward. And another change in the dirt ball two. You saw Mesa warming in the pen. Presumably that's if it, it gets to Otani. But Trout is on deck right now. The Blue Jays hoping they don't have to deal with him. The pitch. Hit well down the left field line, but he's hooked it foul, two and two. They're a strike away. Here it comes. And it's in the dirt, another changeup. It's a full count, and that gives Urshela a running start at first, and remember, he's the tying run. Richard just thrown eight straight changes. 
Runner goes, 3-2, and he walked him. Another change, and the bases are loaded for Mike Trout. And here comes Pete Walker. Interesting time for a meeting. Let me tell you, Trevor, <laughs> you got the bases loaded. <laughs> Mike Trout's up, and you've never faced him before, but I know you can get him. <laughs> this has been a heck of a game. It really right? has. Back and forth, yep. back and forth. Big Walker out for final thoughts for Trevor Richard. So you wanted to be a closer, eh? <laughs> Trout is two for five. Otani is on deck. Six career Grand Slams. Today, two for five. He has struck out his last three times up. And a fastball's popped up. Kirk back towards the screen. He can't make the catch. He went too far, and he couldn't get back. The one thing you have to do as a catcher when those pop-ups go, turn and locate it before you move. He ran back to the backstop and thought out overruns the baseball. And once you do that, you're in trouble. You just can't get back in time. You gotta locate it first before you move. And he went back to the backstop first. Another fastball, and it's one and one on track. Just when you think you'd seen everything you would see in a game this compelling, the Angels still have a shot. Two balls and a strike. The tying run at second, the winning run at first. And the pitch. Another fastball, nothing but fastball so far. Three and one on Trout. And that is foul down the line, three and two. He's got to throw up a changeup now. He's, that's his best pitch. Best pitch is a changeup, and Pete Walker came out there and obviously said, This is your fastball right now because he had thrown at one point, I think he threw nine straight changeups. So if you're ever going to throw a changeup to Mike Trout, now's the time. Runners will be going. Richard steps off. That resets the clock, obviously. Yeah, that's a disengagement. Goes back to 20 with runners on. Now he's ready. And the 3-2. He bounced it into the backstop. Kirk has to run after it. It's ball four as a run scores. It's 12-11. to 11. And now here comes Otani. And he's John Schneider the Richards, or does he go to Mason? He's got to go to Mason. And here he comes. Mason's ready. Otani's the batter. And he did throw him a changeup, but he bounced it. He bounced it right in front of home plate. So then look to you, Tim Mason, to end this game. And what a game it has been. 12 11 and Otani coming to the plate.
Interesting and wild a game maybe as you'll ever see. This is during the pitching change. We don't know, obviously, what John Schneider is saying to Alejandro Kirk. But if that pop-up, that foul pop had been caught, this game would be over. But you got to turn the page now because you got a new pitcher coming in in Tim Meza. And you've got an incredibly dangerous hitter in Shohei Otani coming to the plate. Yeah, and obviously, I'm assuming, I think he was just talking about, okay, you got Tim Meza coming in here. Let's focus on Otani. Let's get out of this game. So Meza had an opportunity to go up against Shohei Otani. Bases are still loaded. Otani one for three in his career against Mesa. The one was last season in August, and it was a home run. Bases loaded, two down. And the pitch. Fastball for a strike, and it's 0-1. Urshel is at third. He's the tying run. Ward is at second. He's the winning run. Trout is at first. And the 0-1. Ooh, got him to swing on a ball down and in, and it's 0-2. A wild swing on a sinking fastball, and Mesa got it down in a good spot. He's in the driver's seat now. He shakes off whatever the first call was from Kirk, now has the one he wants. And the 0-2, a bouncer, weakly hit to second. Biggio to first, and the Blue Jays will win it. In as crazy a game as you will see for a long, long time, the Blue Jays beat the Angels 12 to 11 to win the series and go home with a winning road trip. Boy, what a trip it has been. And you know what? It started out losing two or three in St. Louis. They took three of four in Kansas City, went two or three here. Kevin Kiermaier and Matt Chapman had terrific days at the plate. Matt Chapman at his first career grand slam. He drives in five. Kiermaier drives in five. And Timmy Mason comes out in the most difficult situation you can have. Bases loaded, two outs, and Shohei Otani at the plate. And he gets him out, and the Blue Jays have a winning road trip. What a ball game. I think everybody could use a day off after that one. The home opener is Tuesday night, and of course, we'll have it for you right here on Sportsnet. They're getting on the plane, and they're coming home, and they're going to be in a pretty good mood after winning this game 12-11. Let's send it back to the Budweiser studio now with Jamie and Joe.